referees. Thank you much. Todd McShay and Rod Gilmore here with me. And you see Frank Beaver looking for a fourth ACC championship game victory in five seasons. Clemson, they beat Virginia Tech October 1st in Blacksburg. Gave up three points. Their defense has given up 32 a game since then. Rod, well, let's not worry about their defense. Their offense has also fallen a little bit apart. Yeah. How do they reignite that spark they had through that 8-0 start? Well, I think there are a couple of keys, and I think it begins with Taj Boyd, the quarterback. They have to protect him. He was only 13 of 31 in that first ball game. He has to get back to playing the way he did early in the season when he threw the 24 touchdown passes in the first eight games. Dwayne Allen is one of the best tight ends in the country, Todd. He's a matchup problem in the flat and the corner route. I don't know that Virginia Tech can match up with him. He had a touchdown last time against him. He's a problem. You know, and, and Rod, when they spread you out with their formations, their misdirections and all their motions, it's kind of like a magic trick. You know, they try to take you away from everything they should be focusing on with the pretty woman on the stage, the fireworks and all the music. But Virginia Tech, as you see here, did a great job the first time around with the discipline and focusing. You see 17, Kyle Fuller has outside contained, number one. Anton Exum does a great job coming up the middle. And then number 99, James Gale, does a great job of keeping contained on the outside. Now how about versus the pass, the play action. Most defenses, they're going to get caught up. Linebackers taking false step safeties, peeking in the backfield. Not Bud Foster's defense. The difference is discipline and the fact that they are in the right position at the right time. It didn't lead to a win last time. I think it can this time around, though. Kickoff is approaching, guys. Virginia Tech, do they get payback? Do they do what they did in 07 and 08 and beat a team that beat them in the regular season in this game? Who do you like? It's not a fluke that Virginia Tech is, is playing for the fourth ACC title in five games, and I, I just think that they're better coached, I think that they're physical, and I think that they're gonna come in here and make a statement that they are ready to play. I like the Hokies, and I think they control this game by the fourth quarter. Logan Thomas playing much better quarterback, and that young defensive line, physical, intimidating. I agree with you, I like Virginia Tech tonight. That's no fun. <laughs> Sorry, pal, <laughs> stuck with that one. That would be, again, like you said, a fourth ACC championship game win for Virginia Tech. You talk about dominance. In five seasons, the winner of this game punches a ticket to the Discover Orange Bowl with an opponent yet to be determined. We are approaching kickoff in Charlotte. Brett Musburger. This is Dr. Pepper Championship Week. You are looking live at a sold-out Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina. Tonight, Virginia Tech and Clemson will compete for the ACC Championship. We welcome you to the 2011 Dr. Pepper ACC Championship on ESPN. And the winner tonight will advance to the 2012 Discover Orange Bowl. This a rematch on October 1st. Clemson stormed into Blacksburg, and they dominated the Hokies, forcing fumbles. Their big tight end, Dwayne Allen, had a huge night. 32-yard scoring pass, and then later, it was a stifling defense. And for the first time in a long time, the Hokies were held without a touchdown as Michael Bellamy put a little icing on the cake and you can see the total domination. But things have turned completely around, ladies and gentlemen. And Virginia Tech is red hot. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> with my colleague, Kirk Herbstreit, I'm Brett Musburger. Thanks so much for being with us here tonight. One news update. Michael Bellamy, that youngster you saw going into the end zone, suspended by Dabo Sweeney, the head coach. He has been sent home. Coach said he was not focused. But I will tell you who is focused for Virginia Tech. <laughs> Their quarterback, Logan Thomas, has come on like gangbusters. He sure has. I, I think really the difference in this matchup is Logan Thomas and the confidence that he's playing with right now compared to when they played the first matchup. You know, he only threw for about 127 yards, and I think it's his decision making. You can see he's more assertive when he's running the football. He's throwing the football now with more accuracy. He's accounted for 23 touchdowns, only two turnovers since that matchup with Clemson. And this is a big thing tonight to watch. When the receivers aren't open, his ability to create, and especially against a Clemson defense that has been able to, at times, be taken advantage of. You remember last week, Connor Shaw found a lot of uh, real estate when he tucked the ball and took off and ran. So I think that's something that Logan Thomas at 6'6", 255, if things aren't there, he's going to try to do the same thing. Taj Boyd on the other side. Well, Taj Boyd got off to such a great start. The first eight games, he was as hot as any quarterback in the country. This is earlier this year against Virginia Tech, the play that you talked about, 
falling off of his back foot, but putting the ball in a position where Dwayne Allen can make a play. Since then, the last four games, it's not been the same. Here, you think he bounces to the outside where there's room to run. Instead, he runs into his own man, doesn't run with authority and get it into the end zone. This is really this offense in the last couple weeks in a nutshell. Starting to feel pressure up front, forces a ball into coverage, makes a bad decision. That's what Clemson cannot avoid tonight. They cannot turn the football over. So Sweeney, and on the other side, Virginia Tech. Both schools travel so well. Sellout crowd on hand. Charlotte will be rocking tonight. The Hokies hoping to avenge their only loss of the season. Trying to battle their way down to Miami and the Discover Orange Bowl under Frank Beamer. Dabo Sweeney and the Tigers determined to stop the bleeding. The scene is set in Charlotte. The Dr. Pepper ACG Championship is next. The 2011 Dr. Pepper ACC Championship game. Brought to you by Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. The new Capital One cash card for people who want 50% more cash. And Old Spice. Smell better than yourself. And we welcome you to Jimmy V Week for Cancer Research on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation and Jim Valvano's dream to defeat cancer. Well, what a great location this is for an ACC championship. And as far as these two schools are concerned, and both traveled so very well here to Charlotte, Blacksburg, the home of Virginia Tech, 174 miles away, and Clemson, 132. And believe me, the fans have poured in. Heather Cox, the third member of our team, is down below for Virginia Tech coach Frank Beaver. Let's go there. Brent, thanks so much. Coach, your only loss of the season to this Clemson team. What did you learn in that loss that can help you get the W tonight? Well, we learned that they're a talented football team, well-coached football team. And uh, learn you can't turn the football over and you got to kick the ball well because it's a game of field position. we got two good football teams. Field position is awfully important, and uh, we didn't punt the ball very well in the first ball game. Since then, you're 7-0. and How important has Logan Thomas's development been to your success? Well, he's been real important. He's uh, improved each and every week, gotten better, been uh, accurate, has taken care of the uh, football, and uh, he's been a vital part of our operation. Continued success. Thanks, Coach. On the other sideline, 42-year-old Davo Sweeney, a native of Birmingham, Alabama, third season as head man of Clemson. Now Frank Beamer won the coin toss and the Hokies have deferred here and it is a gorgeous night. Make it a little bit chilly but no moisture in the forecast and the Tigers will get the ball first here and that means that Sammy Watkins who they say is close to 100 percent will be back deep with Jerron Brown. They like to get the ball early and often. Justin Meyer with the ball on the tee here for the Hokies. Perhaps a record setting crowd for an ACC championship on hand here tonight. Journey begins. Watkins stepped out. He's got to come all the way now. 15. 
out to the 22. And we will see Taj Boyd. And Herbie told you in the first eight games, he was magnificent. 24 touchdowns and three interceptions. Then Herbie, last four games, four TDs and seven picks. Yeah, I think this entire offense has been struggling in recent weeks. And I think it's affected Taj Boyd's confidence. I think tonight they're going to try to get him reestablish ability to reestablish his confidence some quick throws try to get this offense back in sync when it was executing in a way that very few offenses in the country were earlier in the year Taj is a redshirt sophomore quarterback out of Hampton Virginia and they'll give it to Ellington Andre Ellington he tries to get that left edge and very close to a first down Posley is there defensively and uh, Herbie, let's take a look at tonight's impact players brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Well, when these guys are clicking, they're as good as anybody. It starts with Taj Boyd and his decision making tonight. Andre Ellington, you can see how quickly he can accelerate upfield. Dwayne Allen, maybe one of the more electrifying tight ends in the country. Keep an eye on big number 83 and Sammy Watkins. The two are kind of tied together when the tight end plays well, it opens it up for Watkins. So they hand it back off to Ellington. And he pounds for the first down before linebacker Jack Tyler brings him down. Here are your offensive linemen, and that fella in the middle, Dalton Freeman, made the All ACC first team as the center. Keep an eye on the left tackle, Philip Price, who's coming back from a sprained knee. They tried to play him early last week. He wasn't a very effective. They took him out. They're hoping he's able to go tonight. Power game working right away. Now Boyd's first pass, and they'll work it short underneath, and that's Brandon Ford. So Brandon Ford, one of the tight ends, a junior from Wando, South Carolina. And right away, you're seeing tempo, 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 something that's very important for Clemson. You see Taj Boyd checking himself out of the game as part of the Wildcat package here, and Clemson getting their, their plays together. But Chad Morris, the offensive coordinator, loves the tempo to try to get the defense on their heels. Ellington will take the snap on the Clemson Wildcat. And he'll keep it himself, and he is stuffed. The Hokies were not fooled on that. And that is Hosley, who is an outstanding defensive back, coming up to make the stop. Number 20, Herbie, if you go back to the stats with him, he once picked Russell Wilson, who was then playing quarterback for North Carolina State, three times in a single game. <laughs> you know, he had nine interceptions last year. He's a first-team All-American. This year, he's come up with three. One of the top cover corners in the ACC, maybe even in the entire country. Now, Tosh Boyd is left with a third and four after that Wildcat play. Didn't gain much. That's Allen, the tight end, going through the formation. Taj looks for that screen over there. Going to take off himself and did not get it. Exum, the safety, comes up and they are a yard short. But Taj Boyd, one thing that he's really trying to improve on is once his primary receiver is not there, he quickly comes off of it and tries to create. That time, as you said, Brandy, he was trying to set up the quick throw, the screen off to the left, but the Hokies defense completely dialed in, reading their tendencies here early, and they were there to take it away and forcing Taj Boyd to have to try to run for it. There's Dawson Zimmerman. Guess who awaits it? Hosley. J. Ron Hosley, the junior from Delray Beach, Florida. Going to let this one roll, and it takes a hokey bounce before it is downed at the 23-yard line. And so, Logan Thomas, and when we say big, we beat it, folks. We'll meet the six-foot-six-inch quarterback when we come back. Three minutes into the Dr. Pepper ACC Championship, and we'll take our first look tonight at Logan Thomas. The first five games that included the loss to Clemson. Early. It's amazing to see the transformation. At 6'6", 254 pounds, I think the difference is he's just now more comfortable with the more reps he's received, the more confident he has become in directing this Hokies offense. He will start on the Hokies' 25-yard line. And keeps it himself. And Andre Branch, who had a monster, is there. Ball comes loose. Clemson claiming they've got it on the first offensive play of the game. And big Andre Branch.
gets off the bottom here with the football. Let's take another look at this one now. Uh, the, the exchange on his own read, there was a miscommunication. That ball looks that's like that's definitely out before he went down. That is a Without fumble. Without a doubt. Anthony, the freshman linebacker, punched it out. And what a future he has. Got it with his shoulder and knocked it free. Without a doubt. That football came out. And two of the better players on the Clemson defense, Andre Branch, and as you said, Anthony jarred that ball loose with his headgear. Yeah, Anthony Herbie was one of the more highly rated linebackers coming into the college game this year. And watching the tapes of them, he's yeah. just been getting more and more reps. Yeah, he, he is a tremendous athlete who has really good instincts. 6'3", 235 pounds. You know, that play started where it was the zone read, and it was a miscommunication. And right here, as he goes down, bang, the ball is out before he touches the surface. Without a doubt, that's a fumble. In that first game, Andre Branch had four sacks against Virginia Tech. He, of course, is a member of the ACC first team all conference this year. And Andre is a senior out of Richmond, Virginia. Probably gets pretty they're fired sorting up. it out here on the field. This goes up, obviously, to the replay. But this is an all star crew, folks. These fellows were working this game tonight, graded out very high. The replay official, Ted Jackson, of course. He received the highest grade of all the replay officials in the ACC. They were saying he was down by contact. We thought the ball had come free. Speaking of all-star crews, that was an all-star picture. That last one really showed that the ball came out and that this was a fumble. And I'll tell you what, for Clemson, a team that's lost three of their last four, they need something early to spark them. They need something early to get their confidence reestablished. And if they get this turnover, maybe this is what this team needs. And if the whistle blew on the play, remember if there is continuous action and the replay official sees that the player is going for the ball, you can turn it over to Clemson. So the whistle, if it's in it, would be inadvertent in that situation. It doesn't matter if the replay official says that the action continued. So here comes the referee, Jerry Magalanis. The ruling on the field, the runner fumbled the ball prior to being down. So the Tigers have it as the call on the field is reversed. And here, Herbie, is what you said, an early opportunity. Now we find out if Taj Boyd's able to take advantage of this first turnover that the Clemson defense has created in over three games. Not only have they been turning it over offensively, they've not been able to create turnovers. And here in the ACC championship, the very first play, they're able to create a turnover and give Taj Boyd great field position. DeAndre Hopkins is one of the receivers out to the right. And Sammy Watkins is up toward the top of your screen. This is Harrington. Couldn't find any daylight. And is dropped at the 25-yard line. We talked about their first day in games. Then you think about 40 points a game. New offensive coordinator, Chad Morris. The turnover margin, everything was going their way. And in the last four games, it's almost like they've become shell-shocked. Taj Boyd threw behind Watkins, but he was under enormous pressure that time. Kyle Fuller, who has been moved up to that hybrid position, he got in on the quarterback. And I think Kyle Fuller is arguably one of the top players in the ACC. He has had to move around this year because of a variety of, in of injuries to Bud Foster's defense. I would say he's the most valuable player on this Hokies defense. They blitz him, they play him in coverage, he does everything. Third down and 10 from the 25. Ties Boyd stands tall, wide open. Touchdown, Dwayne Allen. One of the best tight ends in the country muscled his way in. A broken coverage. And we just talked about Kyle Fuller and how versatile he can be. 
Man-to-man -man coverage, and it looked like Fuller may have gotten lost there in coverage. Left the big tight end all alone. And it's an easy touchdown, an easy throw for Taj Boyd. So they take advantage of the opportunity. Chadler Catanzaro adds the extra point, and a turnover leads to seven points for the Tigers. The 2011 Dr. Pepper ACC Championship game. Brought to you by Dr. Pepper. With 23 flavors, Dr. Pepper is always one of a kind. And the 2012 Ford F-150 with available EcoBoost. Visit Ford.com slash big score for your chance to win big. Charlotte, North Carolina, the home of NASCAR. And a lap around the Charlotte Motor Speedway with Jason Haynes and the Richard Petty driving experience. Only 170 miles an hour. So Benton will kick it off. And it'll be fielded at the 50 by Gregory and Gregory to the 35 yard line. Uh, Virginia Tech played man to man coverage on the outside. They're playing man three, which means the safety's right in the middle. Now the tight end, Dwayne Allen, is going to go out and up. And here is the man who actually should follow. He should be man to man. Everybody else is man to man coverage. And Kyle Fuller actually loses his man, Dwayne Allen. I don't think he ever got the call because he didn't even look at him. And that's the wrong guy in the red zone you want to leave alone. Dwayne Allen is the go to guy for Taj Boyd down in the red zone. Looking for a clean play. The Hokies with one snap turned it over. And a misfire on the pass to Wilson. And we take a look at tonight's impact players brought to you by Dr. Pepper from Virginia Tech. And Logan Thomas, he's going to have to try to show he can come through some adversity tonight after the way this game has started. David Wilson, one of the more electrifying runners, has amazing acceleration. And then on the outside, Jared Boykin and Danny Cole. These guys are number one and number two, respectively, in career receptions. And they're going to have to make some plays against press coverage from the Tigers' defense. Second and ten for the Hokies. That's the fullback, Joy Phillips, as an H-back. Good protection that time. First completion to the 40-yard line, and what a hit. That was Hall, number 31, who unloaded on Danny Cole. And Hall had a huge game last week against South Carolina. Has outstanding ball skills, and right now they're just reading their keys. They're in position as a defense, and it's amazing how one turnover can change a month of frustration for Clemson. They're right now they have their swagger, and they're playing with a lot of confidence, and this defense is flying around. Third and three from their 40. Thomas fires for the first down into Clemson territory. And that's Boykin, number 81, who grew up right here in Charlotte. Nice to see Logan Thomas sit in here. A little stunt up front. It's picked up. No concern at all with the protection. Third and short. And this is where Logan Thomas, again, I think this is the area that he's grown the most. He understands the down and the distance and what he needs for that first down. Makes an accurate throw for the first. Folks, he is 6'6", and he releases up over the top. Second largest quarterback, tallest, I should correct myself, second tallest quarterback in college football in the FBS this year. And he can throw a strike to the 46-yard line, and it is caught. The line judge said that ball was caught by Boykin. A little bonus question tonight. You know who number one is, right? We've seen him this week, right? From Kalispell, Montana. Oh, really? Okay. Brock Osweiler. Brock Osweiler, that's right. Arizona State. Outstanding. That's a good call here. Thomas boy, he just, he just looks like a different guy. And I, I think it's going to be interesting tonight. Everything from the Clemson game on has gone so well for them. Looks like they're going to take another look at it. But everything has gone so well for him and for this team. Coming into tonight, he's accounted for 23 touchdowns and just two, turno two turnovers. Well, tonight he's already got a turnover. It's going to be interesting to see how he faces that adversity and brings this team back because he's got it in him. So they're going to take another look at this. We will here as yeah, Boykin like the, number 81 gets down with the hands. That's skips, clearly sure. yeah. a ball that skipped on the turf, and this will be turned over. So the replay official has been busy here early. Two easy ones, though. We, we Usually where you and I head, right. we'd like to here challenge the replay now. We'll be second and ten. Please reset the game clock. Yeah, right now, Clemson Brent playing a lot. Seconds. 
of man-to-man -man coverage, even press coverage, where they're challenging the wide receivers. At some point, Logan Thomas is going to have to be able to throw the ball vertically downfield. They're going to have to make some pass plays downfield to get this Clemson defense to back up a bit, and then they can get David Wilson and his Virginia Tech running game going. Second and 10, Marcus Davis comes to the left side for Thomas. And now Thomas wants to go back over the play on his wristband. And I don't think Davis was too deeply involved in this play, folks. <laughs> Second down at 10, they might want a single hit. Now trying to get straight is David Wilson. Going to throw to him, and he is hammered for a loss, and that is Brewer. And the first thing we notice about this Tiger team is they are pounding away defensively. They are pinning their ears back, and they're coming after Logan Thomas. I just talked about the press coverage, and I'll tell you, Kevin Steele, the defensive coordinator, from Clemson. He's an aggressive coach, and he knew coming into this game that he needed to be able to challenge Logan Thomas. And the biggest thing that happened that could help Clemson again is getting that turnover and really cranking up that aggression on this side of the football. Third and 12. From the 49 yard line. Thomas steps up in trouble, has to go to the safety valve, and that is the running back, Wilson. Nothing doing. Brought down quickly by Jenkins. And the Hokies are forced to punt here early. And they get him to third and 12, and they play zone. And they're basically just taking everything away downfield. And Kevin Steele could not be more proud of his start to this Clemson defense. And here's a story dropping back to punt again is Danny Cole, the wide receiver. He punted very well for them last week now not only will he occasionally return a punt but now he is the punter and one of their starting receivers he averaged over 47 yards a punt against Virginia last week there's a penalty flag a penalty flag fired to the snap was it a delay of game oh, the clock ran out fourth down I think the, the snapper also Trying to talk to the official. I think there's some confusion down there for Virginia Tech. Well, the snapper, Colin Carroll, number 50 for Virginia Tech, is a story also for Frank Beamer. That young man right there, out of a suburb of Minneapolis, is the first scholarship long snapper that Frank Beamer has ever had. And he hits it at 99.5. Only in the rain against Miami has he ever had a bad snap. Right into Cole's hands. Perfect. And he hangs it high in the air. Hopkins fair catch at the 10 yard line. And well done by the long snapper Carroll and the punter Cole. So we'll come back. It'll be Clemson football. They lead it by a touchdown. Well, it'll all be clear tomorrow night. 8.15 p.m. ESPN. The BCS Selection Show. We'll find out who's going to the five BCS Bulls. Yeah, Herbie, I know you'll be on that show, and we will find out if it's confirmed that it'll be a rematch. LSU and Alabama certainly looks that way, and the winner here would be headed for the Discover Orange Bowl in Miami. But all those decisions will be revealed tomorrow. They bring Watkins around the end. And he picks up a good gain here on first down. Now, the new offensive coordinator, the big change that Dabo Sweeney made, is he brought in Chad Morris, who had spent one year at Tulsa. Now, Coach Morris was a legend in Texas high school. And he brings that up-tempo offense of what he wants, 80 snaps a game. Folks, that's a bunch. Second down and four. Flares out to the side to Ellington. Nothing doing for a loss on that time. And another fine defensive play by Kyle Fuller. He loved to see 80 to 90 snaps. You know, their first eight games when they were humming, they were averaging close to 90 plays a game. And 
these last uh, these last few weeks they've not been able to get into rhythm and get into sync and i think it all starts with taj boyd and his decision making and his accuracy i think he's been forcing some things in recent weeks but he's gotten off to a good start here for clemson tonight well here is a big third down for boyd and he's got the first down deandre hopkins a man from South Carolina picks it up. Brent, Virginia Tech brought everybody, and Eddie Whitley, the safety, almost got home, coming right up the middle. But Taj Boyd, he's got to be able to account for him. He doesn't have enough blockers there. This is a hot route where he's got to get the football out of his hands before Whitley can get to him, makes a nice, accurate throw. And the best thing is he kept his focus downfield instead of looking at the pass rush. Now they come back with Ellington trying to get the left edge, and he cannot get back to the line of scrimmage. So, so far, they have not been able to get the edge rush in. And, and that's been a big emphasis by Bud Foster and the Hokies' defensive staff is they've got to be able to hold that edge, force the ball back to the inside, and I think they have a lot of confidence because of the speed of this defense that they can chase down ball carriers if they can win that battle on the edge. On second and 11, Ties Boyd in trouble. Now coming back as Watkins did a beautiful job. Sammy Watkins saw that the quarterback was scrambling. He came off his route and worked his way back. And a nice job here of improvising by Taj Boyd. He buys just enough time, gets the ball thrown in front of James Gale. And Watkins, like any great receiver, works his way back to his, re his, back to his quarterback. And it looked like he may have stepped out about a half a yard short, but it looks like they're going to bring out the sticks for a measurement. To see the young freshman working back to the quarterback to try to bail him out. Taj Boyd so far, Brent, five of six and, and off to a much better start tonight than the way he has played in recent weeks. That will bolster his confidence. Right? Absolutely. That was what they were hoping for. Chad Morris telling and Davo Sweeney telling us that's what they really wanted to see. Get him off to a good start. So we've got an injured player, and I believe that's Hosley. Who was down. And Hosley, of course, the outstanding defensive back for the Hokies. They've had Chris a lot Hill of injuries to check in with. now. So here comes your third and short coming in. Bonner is also off the bench. If you just joined us, the Tigers are without suspended running back Mike Bellamy. So Ellington. He's going to get a full load here tonight, and here he comes. Barges straight ahead for the first down. Luther Matty in there on the stop. It's been an area that's really been a problem for them. Third and short in this style of offense. Sometimes a little bit more of a finesse offense. They don't have the ability to explode off the line of scrimmage up front. This time they're able to pick it up. First down and 10. Watkins moves into a slot look and they run the ball to the right and that time Ellington with daylight and uh, Heather uh, there was a long meeting on the half of Dabo Sweeney and the Tigers this week. Indeed there was talk about long two and a half hours on Monday for what Sweeney called a reality meeting. He told his team we don't have an ability problem. We have an accountability responsibility and dependability problem. And then he went on to remind his team that the Packers were a wild card team last year. Look what they did. Now it's our playoffs time to make history. And so far they have played well as Ellington if he gets the spot here. We'll have another first down. It's very close. Brent, I think there's so much youth on this football team, and they enjoyed such a big start. That I, think, I think it may have affected them psychologically late in the year once they had already clinched their division, and they were going to play in the ACC championship. I think they lost the edge that they were playing with early in the year, but they've regained it so far tonight. The pistol look, and again it is third and short. Boyd checks over to the sideline. Ellington and the Hokies jumped him. The Hokies jumped him. 
We just talked about how this has been a trouble spot for them on third and short. And it doesn't look like they got it. Whitley and Tyler were there for the Hokie defense. Now he's got a fourth and short, up by seven. Of course, the fans want to see, want to see them go for it. And again here, the Hokies will be very mindful of a fake in this situation. You've got to be careful faking a punt down here. Danny Cole, who punted earlier, is back to return it. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the first for me. Fair catch by Cole, who has already punted in the game, and now he was a return. Now, I've got to tell you, I have never seen that. Never. Who's the receiver for the Patriots? Is playing a little bit of defensive back as well. I mean, he, he's kind of a versatile guy, but I'm not, you're right. I've never even heard of a guy with the ability to punt, punt return, and be one of the primary go-to wide receivers. He was a terrific athlete in high school, as you can imagine. He's out of Lexington, Virginia, fifth-year senior, and now he'll stay on the field as one of the wide receivers for Logan Thomas with the Hokies trailing this one by seven. Trying to get Wilson going. A little bit of daylight in the middle before he's pushed back. You know, Logan Thomas has become a different quarterback from the Clemson game, and I really think you got to go to the Miami game, kind of the drive where he played exceptionally well in the entire football game. He was 23 at 25 for the game. But if you look at this, this drive, eight plays, 77 yards, and here the winning touchdown to put Virginia Tech up 38 to 35. I think that's where his confidence Riley probably gained, he gained the most confidence from that performance. Three wide receivers. And they are all to the left side for the big quarterback. So Clemson shows blitz on the side. They run at it. And not much doing there for David Wilson. And Hall comes up and makes another stop. With this front right now, they're really the front seven, they are attacking. Kevin Steele has them in attack mode. I think they are determined to make Logan Thomas, Danny Cole on one side, Jared Boykin on the other, and Marcus Davis, the receivers from Virginia Tech, show that they can get away from press coverage. And if they're not going to be able to execute some sort of vertical passing game, they're going to continue to face an attacking Clemson defense. Now it is four wide with the tight end out. They bunch to the left. Thomas back to the middle, and he's got Marcus Davis. And Davis is down at the 47-yard line. A first down with Meeks hanging on. Uh, Big third down pass. Yes, sir, Brandon. This is great protection on third and long. Logan Thomas throws it just in time, just in time, before a Clemson defender can get over. He splits the seam there, and Xavier Brewer just missed getting a hand on that football to knock it away. Wilson and Oglesby, both running backs. Josh Oglesby joins David Wilson in that backfield alongside Thomas. They've got three wide. Oglesby behind Wilson that time and still going. His first carry of the game, and it's a beauty. Let's check in with Reese Davis for an update. Brent Taco Bell Studio update. First, we'll take us to the Big Ten Championship game. Russell Wilson, Jeff Duckworth for the score. Seconds ago, Edwin Baker answered for Michigan State. They're tied at seven about halfway through the first quarter. Winner to the Rose Bowl. Bedlam, Jeremy Smith of Oklahoma State strikes first, and the Cowpokes up by a touchdown halfway through the first on ABC. And here, of course, Clemson leads Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech go into Clemson territory for the first time. And there goes the deep ball. Caught. Touchdown, D.J. Coles. 45 yards through the air. We just talked about they've got to be able to get the ball thrown downfield against this press coverage. Play action, got the defensive backs with their eyes in the backfield, and a great job by Coles getting behind the coverage and a good throw by Logan Thomas. Janelle tacks on the extra point. So 
44 seconds left at the first quarter. The Dr. Pepper ACC Championship deadline. Determined spirit lives at Clemson. Always has. We're passionate. We're tenacious. And we're solid orange. But most of all, we're a family. Sometimes loud, always proud, ever loyal. With a determined spirit that says, bring it on. Go Tigers. Such a great scene here in Charlotte for the Dr. Pepper ACC Championship. That's a record crowd. Two schools that travel very well. Both of them can get here. Deadlock. Watkins is driven deep into the end zone. He'll take a knee and come out to the 20. Man to free again by Clemson. Man to man out here. Free safety in the middle who's just kind of roaming back there. Play action in the backfield. Notice the play action. That's going to get the linebacker and the safety up. Coles goes inside, actually turns the safety around Xavier Brewer, and then it's a great throw downfield. When teams play press coverage, the quarterback in the passing game, you've got to be able to make them pay for it. Not only is that a touchdown for the Hokies, Brent, but it can affect play calling down the road and make it easier now for David Wilson to be able to run the football. If you weren't with us earlier, Thomas fumbled the first snap of the game and it led to the Clemson touchdown. And Taj keeps it, slips it outside to Matavis Bryant, his first catch of the game. And Bryant is out to the 22-yard line, a gain of a couple. Well, let's make it three, closer to the 23, actually. It's a common play you see in college football and the next level of an option play where he fakes it and then he has the option to either run it or throw it out to the receiver. It's not a pitch option, but it's either a pass or run option for the quarterback. And here's Taj and he is upended by Exum. Antoine Exum, a hard hitting safety, comes up and we have come to the end of the first quarter. Clemson strikes first early. But Virginia Tech answered. And in the Dr. Pepper ACC Championship, we are deadlocked at seven. Welcome back to the ACC Championship in Charlotte, where Virginia Tech's DB J. Ron Hosley is out right now, was diagnosed with a stinger, has pain and numbness down into his left hand. His return is in question right now, depending on whether the numbness goes away. Now, guys, not a good sign, considering Virginia Tech defense is already down three starters from the last time they faced Clemson, prompting Frank Beamer to tell us yesterday our defense is not as good as it was earlier in the season because they're down so many starters, Brent. So young Bonner is on the field as Ty's Boyd looks right at him and throws in underneath Detrick Bonner, who has replaced Hosley. So they immediately go to Brown for the completion, aiming right at the youngster for 17 yards. Well, they just simply read the corner and made an evaluation on what to do with the football. Nice, accurate throw. Great decision by Taj Boyd. Chris Hill is the corner on the other side, and Fuller has moved up to that hybrid spot. Taj Boyd with plenty of time, can't find a receiver. Throws it away. Virginia Tech outstanding coverage there. And I think the thing that the Hokies want to challenge Taj Boyd on tonight is trying to take away his primary receiver. He has a tendency, if his go-to receiver's not there, his eyes come down onto the pass rush, and he starts to want to create. Even sometimes when he's not feeling pressure, he starts to bail out. That time they took away the primary and got the pressure where they needed it. D.J. Howard checks in as the other running back with Ellington. Ties Boyd in trouble. Hit on the release that time by J.R. Collins, the Russian from Stafford, Virginia. Uh, J.R. Collins on one side and James Gale on the other going to test this Clemson offensive line that's given up 11 sacks in the last two games. Good job of bringing actually some pressure by Kyle Fuller. He occupied the offensive tackle and it freed it up for J.R. Collins to get the pressure. Ellington, the lone running back. Three wide to the left for Taj Boyd on this big third down. Boyd gonna go deep. Watkins, foot race. 
no penalty flags. Covered by Kyle Fuller. And he was with him. That was excellent cover. It was. Fuller, again, the, the such versatility. He's able to run stride for stride with one of the fastest receivers in the country. And again, Boyd gets hit this time by Derek Hopkins. But look at this. Fuller's been pressuring. He's been blitzing. Now he's back in coverage. The fans here think that he's bumping on Sammy Watkins. Pretty tight coverage there by Fuller. Dawson Zimmerman. And Cole is back. Fair catch at the 13-yard line, and that's where Virginia Tech will put it in play. 7-all at the Dr. Pepper ACC Championship. Well, all of the Clemson family wearing the number 91 tonight in tribute to Chester McLaughlin, a former defensive standout at end who died this week at the age of 42. He was an assistant coach with the Stanford Cardinal. He had been Brought in by Jim Harbaugh and stayed out there with the new administration. And our condolences go to his wife, Zena, and two lovely, lovely daughters. Here now at the championship game, Virginia Tech deadlocked, and Oglesby gets the first handoff, and he is to about the 15-yard line where it will be spotted on first down. You know, Herbie, when we were out at Stanford for a game a couple weeks ago, Chester, he looked to be trim. He was playing basketball with those two beautiful daughters. He, you just don't know. You, you really don't. And uh, you know, obviously a great Clemson Tiger and a uh, man who was trying to give back. You know, had, had a great career and decided to be a part of that staff with, uh, with David Shaw and doing great work. So you're right. Our, our, our thoughts and prayers go out to, their, to his family. Second down and eight for Logan Thomas. You're going to take off on a quarterback draw, six foot six inches, and if they give him the spot, he could have the first down. Well, this is the area that really gave this Clemson defense fits last week against South Carolina. And if the fans from Clemson are watching, they know that Connor Shaw had a field day running the football last week, 113 yards rushing, most of those when plays broke down and he was scrambling. And that time, Logan Thomas taking advantage of, again, some room there and picks up the first down. Meanwhile, Thomas against Virginia, Herbie ran 18 times for 70 yards and ran in for two touchdowns. First down and 10. And he has to throw the screen pass away. He's under enormous heat. Meeks in on top of him. Uh, Kevin Steele continues to mix up the coverages, playing a lot of man-to-man. -man. Meeks 5 just goes right by De Christopher, the right tackle. Thomas really didn't have a chance to be able to set up this screen off to the right. Good time to call that by Kevin Steele. It's a little bit of a risk, but they got there before the play could have been set up. And if they got it off, it would have been a big play. Chris Drager, the tight end, number 33, has checked back into the lineup. It'll be second down and 10 for the Hokies. And Oglesby continues to be the running back. This is going to put him in third and long. Hawkins, the middle linebacker, with the stop. Continues to be very, very tough to be able to run the football. When you think about Frank Beamer football, Brent, over the years, you think of a dominating defense, outstanding special teams, and an offense that prides itself on running the football. With Logan Thomas and really Tyrod Taylor the last couple of years, that's changed quite a bit. Tonight, they're not being able to get a push at all against this Clemson front. The left tackle, Andrew Lanier, checking back into the game. Becton, his backup, had been on the field. So here's third and long for Thomas and the Hokies. Clemson shows pressure. Incomplete. And terrific coverage that time by Breland. Man-to-man -man coverage on third down. Breland takes away the inside, or at least he gets beat initially but is able to recover his positioning there. He looked like he was trying to take away Jared Boykin on the quick slant. Boykin got there initially, but the quickness and the acceleration by Breedlin allowed him to catch up to knock that ball away. So wide receiver, punt returner, Danny Cole, back into punt again. Standing on his own 11, hits it about the 15-yard line. Hopkins will let it bounce. 
And it'll roll dead at the 28 yard line. So it'll be Clemson football deadlocked at seven in the Dr. Pepper ACC Championship. The 2011 Dr. Pepper ACC Championship game. Brought to you by Dr. Pepper. With 23 flavors, Dr. Pepper is always one of a kind. And the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Well, the crowd has so enjoyed the mascots from the various ACC schools here. They lit the Christmas tree earlier in the week. And the kids have had such a good time with tigers and Pokey birds and all the rest. <laughs> First down and 10 now. Ellington straight ahead to about the 28 yard line. Last time Clemson was on the field, it's an example of what Chad Morris wants the quarterback to be able to do. A linebacker blitz. He's got a receiver, a running back out of the backfield all alone. Nobody picked him up. He's got to be able to read that hot read. Instead, he locks into his primary receiver, Sammy Watkins, and just heaves it downfield. It's an incompletion, and they're taken off the field. Ties Boyd. Keeps it, throws on the move, and it is complete for a first down to the 45-yard line. And Sean Peake, the freshman from Moore, South Carolina. Here's a great throw this time by Boyd. He throws it actually back behind the receiver, allows him to use his body to be able to deflect and keep the defender away from him. So this time Taj Boyd on the run to the left, it comes back, throws back against his body, and makes an accurate throw. And they come back with Watkins. Trying to get that edge with his great speed. And let us check in with Reese Davis for Sports Center right now. And Brent, that Sports Center right now is presented by Discover Card. LSU fell behind Georgia 10-0, then scored 42 unanswered, a dominant second half. Undefeated Bayou Bengals off to the national championship game. Houston not going to the BCS. Southern Miss upsets them 49-28. So as a result, Reese, we would expect that TCU, if they move up, will get a bid to a BCS Bowl. And again, tomorrow night at 8.15, that'll all be made public. And then at 9 o'clock, at the top of the hour, they'll unveil all of the bowl matchups. But it is very possible, if things break right, that TCU will play Michigan in the Sugar Bowl. But we'll have to wait and see how that unfolds. Second down here in short, Herbert. Ellington for the first down. Whitley makes the stop. Clemson still trying to fight to get to the outside. It's such a big part of this offense. Play before, they got Sammy Watkins on that jet sweep, coming from the right to the left, back into the boundary. He got the corner, picked up big yards, and this time again, they worked that left side of the Clemson offense. Quick picks to Watkins trying to use his speed against Chris Hill. And he goes for a burst to the 31-yard line before he's forced out of bounds. And that's a first down. You know, Chris Hill felt challenged the last time these two teams met. He really felt, I remember hearing him after the game say, you know, I took it personal. They wanted to come after me. They wanted to challenge me. And I stepped up and I thought I played very well. Again, they're trying to come after him again with especially Hosley down and Bonner and Hill holding up the corner spots. Now they look back to the Bonner side on the juggle. Watkins again forced out of bounds. And he's at the 26 yard line and that's where Clemson will have second down. But this time Taj Boyd is able to check it down instead of locking in and trying to throw it and force it downfield. He makes a good decision and now here's second and five. open on the other side's Hopkins Hopkins goes to the six yard line and Fuller finally brings him down but it is first and goal as we take a look back at how they're doing in the red zone and look at the soft coverage from these corners remember Hosley is out Hill is on one side Bonner on the other and they're really challenging the Virginia Tech corners a 20 yard gain and Ellington battles his way to the three and the red zone 
is brought to you by Verizon and you can see how they have fared as Morris makes his substitution package as they approach the goal line sends his jumbo unit on the field. He's got to be very proud of this drive. We'll see if they can punch it in and get a touchdown. Eight plays 70 yards a little over two minutes and they're definitely in a little bit more of a hurry up mode. From under center. Taj Boyd scrambling and gives ground. It'll be third and goal. J.R. Collins there defensively. Great coverage by Virginia Tech. They took away the two receivers that were going off into the corner of the end zone. And Taj Boyd just trying to create to make something happen. But the Hokies stay at home. And the speed again, very evident from Virginia Tech. Third down. Taj Boyd keeps it, tripped up, and a decision to be made by Swinney and Clemson. Tyler tripped the quarterback up number 58. And Swinney does not hesitate. Sends the field goal unit onto the team. Quick read here by Taj Boyd. He's checking out the defensive end. He wants to be able to make it sure that the end commits down to Ellington. He does. That's the right read. But Virginia Tech is sitting right where they need to be to keep Boyd out of the end zone. A 20-yard attempt here for Catanzaro to put the Tigers back in the lead. On the money. So for the second time tonight, Clemson has the lead. All right. Time for tonight's athletic question. The first meeting between Virginia Tech and Clemson. Charlotte right here. 19 Turby, I did not call what the game. Who was Clemson's <laughs> exactly. head coach? Well, you're a ball boy 1900. That who was Clemson's head coach? All right. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Why would you even ask that? Coming up right after the kick. David Wilson, by the way, is back on the field. And Benton. Gregory will field this one at the 10-yard line for the Hokies. A little bit of a crease. And he is out to the 39-yard line. All right, here we who do you have? Come on, Herbie, take a shot. Take a shot. Who was the guy? We wouldn't have asked you this if it was not a well-known name. Well, of if course. it was a name you're not thinking about. Okay. And you'll be thinking about more in a week from now. It yeah. is somebody who I know you're thinking about. Heisman. That a boy. Here that we go, boy. baby. Here we go. <laughs> John Heisman. Clemson won that game, folks. 17 to 5. <laughs> Johnny Heisman. Was that game brought by Dr. Pepper? I, <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Go David Wilson is back in as running back. And he is cut off immediately. What a read they seem to have when he's going to get the ball here tonight. Well, I, again, I think they're really just dialed in to stopping the Virginia Tech running game. Watch the orange jerseys. Watch how they are running to the football. They're beating Virginia Tech up front at the line of scrimmage. Blake Christopher that time getting thrown around. But well, these guys are playing hard, and Andre Branch quietly having a big-time game. This entire defense playing great. Courtney Brown also involved up front on that, that play. Logan Thomas is 6 of 10. He has thrown one long touchdown pass. And that to Coles for 45 yards. Now up over the top, and Wilson couldn't hang on. And that was because of the hit by Lewis. Carlton Lewis, uh, safety from St. Augustine, Florida, unloads. And how many times have we seen this where they call helmet to helmet? This time you see the safety, Lewis, mm. who comes in a little bit high. I mean, anymore, you can't watch. You can't watch a college or a pro game without that hit being called almost every single time. Agreed. We saw it called on the West Coast, didn't yeah. we? Yeah, every, almost every game you watch. Now here's your third and ten now. Four receivers out. And pressure on a four-man rush that time. And Andre Branch, the big defensive end, in on top of Thomas. First meeting, six tackles for a loss, four sacks. Coming off the left side, he just uses his speed to go right around Lanier. Wasn't anything fancy outside of just using his left arm to keep Lanier away, and then great quickness to go around him. 
Clemson leading by a field goal. Cole on to punt once again for the Hokies and Hopkins back deep. A booming punt by Cole. Hopkins hopes this one goes in the end zone, but he kills it at the two-yard line. Oh my God. Danny Cole is wasting his time as a wide receiver. He could punt for a long time. 59 yards and out of bounds at the two. Coming up at the half, the Dr. Pepper ACC Championship tuition throw. Two finalists, Jonathan Wynn and Josh Dawson, will go head-to-head -head for a chance to take home $100,000 in tuition. That'll be at halftime. 6.47 remaining, officially a 60-yard punt. So Taj Boyd from his own end zone, on the move, hit on the release, and I think that receiver was out of bounds. Yes, indeed. And Whitley was applying some heat. Uh, Clemson taking a little bit of a chance here with play action, slow developing play, and Boyd trying to get outside. He gets outside of Tyrell Wilson. But, Brent, as you said, Eddie Whitley was closing in as he tried to eventually get the ball thrown out there to Watkins, but Watkins clearly out of bounds. Tigers up by three. Got to be careful down here. Ellington. About six yards deep in the end zone. Gets a handoff, and there's a hole on the left side, and he squirts out. Ellington in a foot race. Out of bounds at the 34-yard line for a first and 10. So you talk about an escape. 33 yards for Andre Ellington. Well, you can see Andre Ellington is healthy now. This cut right here and the ability to break away from an arm tackle and then the acceleration. That's something that Clemson fans love to see is number 23 in the open field. Ty's board directing this offense with a three-point lead. Here's young Watkins. And he'll be thrown down at about the 37. Whitley again. And uh, Eddie Whitley, the senior from right here in Charlotte, doing a good job defensively on this series as the plays are signaled. Many of those signs are dummy signs, and you never know when you're working against a Chad Morris coached offense which ones are live. D.J. Howard in as the running back. Ties Boyd on the move. And he has to throw it away as the Hokies were on top of him. And Marshall, a freshman tackle. You know, Derek Hopkins is starter. His brother Antoine out with an injury, but all the second stringers are in there now for the Hokies, Herbie. Look, look at Virginia Tech sniffed his screen out from the very, very beginning. Wilson, the defensive end, the entire second team defensive line is in. And Wilson was able to pick that up right away and just locked up the wide receiver. Todd Boyd, again, nowhere to go with the football. So Ellington back on the field for the offense. Taj Boyd's in trouble. That was pressure off the edge by Zach McCray. Redshirt freshman forced him up into the pocket and the tackle was made by Hamlin. Well, watch the left tackle. There's some confusion up front again. Philip Price comes down and doesn't block anybody. I mean, Zach McCray, he's, a, he's an athletic guy, but he's pretty easy if you don't block him. So we saw this as a concern last week against South Carolina where they gave up six sacks. Philip Price steps down, and McCray comes up with another sack. So our punter is back to return a punt again. Danny Cole awaits Zimmerman's punt. Heat on him, and I might have gotten a piece of that one. There is a penalty flag because apparently they got a piece of the punter too, and that was Hopper. Now there is the young man that they threw the penalty First flag on. First goal foul, roughing the passer from the 26 defense. 15-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Automatic first down. He, the Hopper's the saying that he touched the football, and Frank Beamer's saying, hey, if he touches the ball, exactly. all bets are off. You exactly. don't have to worry about roughing a punt. Let's take a look now. Let's see if 26 gets a hand on that ball. I think he might have. Yeah, I thought it had a strange flight pattern. But it is hard to tell. Hopper came up right away, kind of giving you that indication that, hey, I tipped the ball. I tipped the ball. And Frank Beamer is still on the field with the line judge. And now the line judge is going to stop it. 
He's going to go out to the referee. The ruling on the field was roughing the kicker. The previous play is under further review. Replay buzzed the downfield officials. The previous play is under review. So this has been instigated upstairs by the replay official who wants to see if perhaps the youngster didn't touch it. Now I tell you it had a strange flight. When you watched it live from up here that doesn't prove everything because you know the punter had to hurry. Hopper said he got a hand on the ball. And of course this is a possession decision here. The first look Brent that we had looked like you could see as you said a change in the flight of the football off of the punt. Hopper gets in there Coles gets in there. Boy, it, it does it does look like it changes now is it enough to be able to ch overturn it is, is a question. You can see the flight pattern of that ball. And it struck me unusual Frank Beamer of course as all of you know uh, he has made a career out of blocking kicks through the years. It was interesting in a discussion with him about it. He said the one thing that has improved dramatically across the board in all of college football, special teams play. Not as easy to block kicks as it once was. That, of course, was a secret weapon of Virginia Tech. But he said very seldom now do you get a free shot at a punter. He's given too many clinics. Exactly. <laughs> He's taught everybody. I'm telling you, everybody comes into Blacksburg in the offseason to right. study special teams. Well, here comes the decision. After further review, the ruling on the field stands as called. Interesting. First down. Not it was evidence. difficult to overturn. Now, I, I want to back the instant replay official in this because even though I thought that the hand might have been on the ball. I'm not sure I could have overturned it with what we saw. Yeah. And, and Frank Beamer's last argument was you could see the ball changing and yeah. the way it was coming from the way it came off the foot and then the way it was flying through the air. But Clemson, hey, they'll, they'll take the break. Clemson leads it. Five minutes to go here in the first half. And a quick pitch to Watkins and coming up hard for that stop on the corner is Bonner the youngster who replaced Hosley. So Dietrich Bonner with a fine tackle and Dietrich Bonner and Chris Hill are going to have to continue to make plays because Hosley with that stinger there aren't any indications there's at this point that he might be coming back out of the field. Now Exum goes up and watches Allen the tight end. Ties Boyd comes back the other way to Ellington. And Ellington is stopped in open field by Fuller. So th th this guy, the more tape I looked at this week, the more I just fell in love with Kyle Fuller. He had an older brother, Vinny Fuller, who's a great player at Blacksburg. And that is just perfect technique. That's not where you just lower your shoulder and try to knock the guy down with a collision. Look at the wrapping up. Perfect form tackle for all the youngsters out there on how to make a tackle in the open field. Basically five defensive backs. Ties Boyd back under pressure, deflected incomplete. And they are forced to punt. That's an incomplete pass. And Edwards was in on top of the play and tipped the pass. And on third down, Virginia Tech and Bud Foster is coming after this offensive line. It's not just about coming after Taj Boyd. It's about coming after the offensive line. And that time you saw Edwards, the linebacker, with the pressure, he goes up and knocks the, ball, the football down. Now Fuller goes back deep with Danny Cole. Danny Cole is the return man. Should there be a short punt, Fuller is standing. On the Hokies 31. Cole inside the 20. 359 remaining in the first half. Cole's gonna let this one bounce. And it hits a Clemson player at about the 17-yard line. I want to remind everybody this week on Monday Night Football, the Chargers will try and stay in the AFC West race. They take on Jacksonville. Jaguars, of course, we've got a new coach, Jack Del Rio, is out. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern. Monday night countdown served by Applebee's. Philip Rivers, and if you're like me, you're wondering what has happened to Philip Rivers.
more interceptions and touchdowns this year. It's been bizarre, and everybody's looking at Phillip Rivers and North Turner and wondering, what has happened to San Diego? Now, that was a team that a lot of people anticipated having a great run this year in the AFC, but it, it's Tim Tebow time out west right now. <laughs> no question. <laughs> and now it was Logan Thomas forced to take off and upended at the 21 as we go to Reese Davis for an update. Brent, you're not going to believe this one. Wisconsin-Michigan State 21-14. Kirk Cousins to Keith Nickel. Uh, I think Keith Nickel is being a thorn in Wisconsin's side. The pitch from the former quarterback back to B.J. Cunningham. Got a two-point conversion. Sparty's up by one now. Here we oh, go. Again. Yes, I would believe it. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Second down. And complete. And that is Cole, the putter. And he is thrown out of bounds at the 25-yard line. So this is going to bring up about a third and two coming up for the Hokies. These Virginia Tech fans are fired up after the no call on the punt. And now they're seeing Cole go out of bounds. They think that uh, Clemson defender there, Brewer, may have thrown him after the he was already out of bounds. I think 29 took his arms off. Yeah. It's okay. We got to be able to still hit people in this game. They're down and two now for the Hokies. David Wilson Clemson has been him. stopped pretty much here tonight. He's carried three times for four mm -hmm. yards, the ACC MVP. So for our guys from Blacksburg to get back in this game, they trail it by three. They're going to need a dose of that running back. I mean, this has been a terrific defensive performance by Kevin Steele's defense there for the Tigers so far. They are attacking the line of scrimmage. They are pinning their ears back. I don't think at this point they are respecting Logan Thomas in the passing game. Now, Logan Thomas made him pay for it. He got a ball thrown downfield to DJ Coles, but I think they're going to have to have more of that because right now it's not just the numbers that are up there for Clemson. It's the mentality. Kevin Steele, as you said, these guys are, as soon as the ball is snapped, they're attacking. It makes it tough for any cutback lanes that potentially could be there, and, and it's been tough for the Hokies to run the ball. Now, of course, the winner moves on to the Discover Orange Bowl down in Miami, and off of what happened in the SEC Championship, we are fully expecting, Herbie, tomorrow that it will be LSU and Alabama in the BCS National Championship game Slam. on January 9th. Slam dunk, and, and with Houston losing, Boy, it, it makes it interesting for tomorrow night as far as the at-large spots because Michigan, you know, they obviously need to be able to get up there close enough to be able to have a chance. But TCU, you talked about it earlier, they get up into the top 16 and they're higher ranked than West Virginia, Big East team that won their conference, which you would think they will be. They get an automatic spot in the Sugar Bowl, which Absolutely. should be exciting. Gary That'd Patterson, fun, yeah. West Virginia is expecting to get a bid to the yep. Discover Orange Bowl. Here is third down and two. And the big quarterback with the read option keeps it for the first down. Now the All-State BCS standings look like this. And there are the top two teams who figure to be right there. Oklahoma State leading Oklahoma. And if they win it automatically, they would go to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. And it's probable that Stanford would be their opponent. Yeah, and you look at Boise State at 11-1 with Kellen Moore. They're going to be very highly ranked in the final BCS standings, and you wonder if they may be the team that's left out as a potential BCS at large. First down and 10 coming up. Logan Thomas throws back across the field. Double coverage incomplete. Boykin was the receiver and there is a penalty flag on the far side of the field over by the 19 yard line. Offside, number 40 defense. Five yards, replay first down. So Branch yeah. jumped offside on the play. He's in a sprinter stance. He got off to a little bit of a quick start there. Andre Branch, really the whole defensive line and talking to the Clemson coaches and even the Verdabo Sweeney's group, the strength being clearly the front four. And for Clemson to be able to disrupt Virginia Tech, that front four is going to have to have a big night. They played very well up to this point. First down and five, and Thomas runs the option play, and here's the pitch, and cut down is Wilson. Meeks had the pitch, man, and he did a great job. They are just not letting 
Wilson get any daylight nope. here. Four carries for seven yards. They are taking him away. Another great open field tackle by a defensive back. Goodman took away the quarterback and made the quarterback, Thomas, pitch the ball. And as you said, boy, Meeks was closing in on a hurry onto David Wilson, and he didn't have a chance. There's been some excellent tackling by both these teams here tonight. No doubt. Yeah, some of the best open field tackling I've seen this season, yeah. actually. Second down now, and two. There's a misdirection with Wilson. Let's see what happens. And this time, he gets a little daylight for a first down to the 45. And let's go to Reese Davis for an update, Reese. Brent, coming up on the Wendy's Halftime Report, LSU punches its ticket to New Orleans. In terms of the BCS, case closed for Houston. And Bedlam for the BCS, Oklahoma State just came up with a huge defensive turnover, trying to take control of that one. Mark and Lou join me. We'll see you in just a bit. All right, Reese, and of course, Oklahoma has dominated that series over the, much of the last decade. The last Oklahoma State coach to win a Bedlam game was Les Miles before he went to LSU. First down and 10 now. Thomas can't get an open man, going to be sacked. Takes a sack. Had to throw that away timeout. at the 37 with the clock ticking down. Rennie Moore credited with the sack, but you can't take a sack in that situation. Now the one, exactly. The one thing you cannot do, and this is where Logan Thomas is still growing, great coverage downfield. Outstanding, but at some point, you've either got to find your check down and throw it to David Wilson, or you've just got to get outside and throw it away. But you can't take the sack. Not only do you lose the yardage, the clock keeps moving. You're forced to use a timeout. They're fortunate that they had three timeouts, and now they're down to two. He is such a good story, Logan Thomas, out of Lynchburg, Virginia, raised by a single mom who had to work two jobs. So basically his grandparents, his mother's father and mother raised him, and they said that at the age of three, he would come, Grandpa, let's go outside and play ball. Oh, Logan, I'm a little bit tired, and look, my shoes are off. I'm watching TV. And sure enough, Logan would have the shoes in his hand and say, let's go, Grandpa. I love and that. Grandpa would go outside, How about that? and they played basketball. And when he was three, four years old, and by the time he was 11 and 12, he was a terrific young basketball player. And Absolutely. then he discovered football. So he's just a wonderful story. Second down, didn't think he wanted to play quarterback, but here he is. And in trouble again, and this time he does throw it away. Right? On Andre Branch. So that's a big first down. But Branch is so excited to be able to get pressure. Remember, he grew up in Virginia. First Four foul. sacks last that's time the passer, that they played this. 40 defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Taking him out of the game. He had four sacks last time they played. He came close to getting after Logan Thomas. See, again, Thomas is hanging on, hanging on, hanging on a little bit too long. Good call there. Branch just takes it too far. But Logan Thomas, part of his experience as a basketball player, I think stunted maybe his growth as a quarterback. So he's still kind of learning as we watch him as just a sophomore at 6'6", 255 pounds. So with the penalty, the ball is moved to big the Tigers' 48-yard line. Big mental error there. Uh, one minute, two timeouts. Trailing by three, and on the slant, D.J. Coles to the 30-yard line. And they are moving closer to field goal territory here. Jernell on the season 13 of 16. He's hit a 41-yarder this season against Marshall. Soft coverage there. Good job of recognizing that. Easy throw for Thomas. 50 seconds. Got timeouts to stop the clock. Thomas can come and use the middle of the field, and he does just that. Drager, the tight end, and forget the field goal. They got enough yeah. time to take a crack at the end zone here. And the clock stops, obviously, with a first down. Now he's in a little bit more of a groove here these last two plays. Here comes pressure. And they force the bad throw to Drager. Hall. <laughs> A safety blitz was coming hard. I love the call by Kevin Steele. They just gave up back-to-back -back plays where Thomas had time to throw. They're hurrying up, and they bring the pressure with Hall right up the middle. That's been a problem for Andrew Miller as a first-year starting center. Teams that pressured them to the interior of the offensive line. There's been some confusion at times. That time Hall got in there, but a good call, an aggressive call by Kevin Steele. 35 seconds. 
They can still use the middle of the field because they've got the two timeouts. Second down and ten. And tripped up is Wilson. Time comes across the 15. Jenkins was there, and so they will burn the timeout right now. Those last two throws gave you a feel for how good Logan Thomas can be and where eventually he will well, he will grow and become more consistent. Uh, he was able to throw a, a perfect ball to DJ Coles and he came right back and found Drager and back-to-back -back throws. You know, you'd start to think about this Virginia Tech team down the road. They battled through so many injuries this year and they're such a young team. It's amazing that they're up in the top five right now in the BCS standings considering everything that they've been through. But next year's team has a chance to be outstanding for Frank Beamer. Well, Frank Beamer now with Joe Paterno out at Penn State. Frank is the dean of coaches. 65 years old, done a fabulous job. He grew up in Carroll, Virginia, 70 miles south southeast of Blacksburg. Of course, he played there. Later went to Murray State as a head coach, then back to Virginia Tech. So here is third down and nine with 29 seconds. Thomas on a quarterback draw is going to be down at the seven yard line. And there's a penalty flag thrown back at the 18. So hang on for this penalty. It's like a holding call. He's indicating that. Better put, put that football away. It almost came out of there. So now they've got to be concerned about setting up. Cody Jernell here for the tying field goal. He's got 20 seconds. Holding number 68 offense. 10 yard penalty. Replay third down. And that's Brooks, the right guard, who is guilty, and uh, he's on the all ACC second team. Hey, Brent, I know he loves to play hoops, but look at the ball. Boy, look out. It's away from his body. You've got to put that football away. And Clemson's trying to, ooh, almost came out there at the end. So it is third down. The ball is back at the 25 so this would put it 42 yards they need to pick up a few yards the here and use that time here, out Brent. the big clock is running they've got yeah. to hurry when frank beamer is irate because when the big clock takes off and he wants an explanation for the referee 30 second timeout so this is their last timeout with six seconds and so when they spotted the ball, well, again, you got to know he's trying to call a timeout late, but an offensive penalty, the, the game clock will roll. And so you've got to be aware of that from the sidelines. You've got to be aware of that, obviously, as a quarterback. It's not just the, the play clock. It's the game clock that's moving. They wasted about eight to ten seconds there. Now, this would be a, a long for Cody Jernell around 42 yards. And he trots onto the field. Trey Gresh, redshirt freshman from Blacksburg. He will be the holder, number 16. We told you about the snapper. So Carroll. This is on the right hash. And a 42-yarder. This would be his career long if he makes it. Beautiful. Didn't he curl that one in for a career long? Bailed him out. <laughs> Coach and quarterback, <laughs> I might add. Everybody. <laughs> that was pretty good timing for a, a big time field goal here. Great snap. The hold is perfect. And he got, I mean, that's that's the that's the way you want to hit it if you're a field goal kicker. One second left, 10 to 10. It's gonna be an interesting second half. Yeah, Janelle's out of Ripple Mead, Virginia, redshirt sophomore, and now he's 14 of 7, 17 on the season. Kicking game so critical. Oh, so, so, so important, and I'm sure it'll come into play in the second half. Incidentally, Virginia Tech does get the ball to start the second half, mm -hmm. so that was big for them to get three points and then be able to come back after the break and get the football back in the hands of Logan Thomas. So Justin Meyer, 
We'll put the ball on the tee and they'll run the timeout here. It has been 30 years since Clemson last visited the Orange Bowl. Back in those days, it wasn't the Discover Orange Bowl as it is now. So there'd be a lot of orange down there in Miami if Clemson could make it. Line drive. And that's Brown picking it up in the end zone on the last play of the first half. So we will go to the intermission deadlocked at 10 here in the Dr. Pepper ACC championship sellout crowd in Charlotte North Carolina let's go down to Heather Cox coach after a quiet first half your offense sparked on that last possession how do you carry that into the second half well we just got to do what we do we just got to execute and uh, get into playing the way we play and uh, I don't think we played a Great first half. I think you give Clemson credit. I think they've done well, but uh, we got to get to doing what we do. After you played Clemson the first time, Logan Thomas admitted to feeling panicked by Clemson's pass rush. What is it about their defense that's so frustrating? Well, I mean, they've got good players, but uh, I don't uh, really think uh, it's as much them as it is us right now. Coach, thanks for your time. Heather, yeah, thank you very much. So, Reese Davis, as we go to you, Lou Holtz picked Georgia in a big upset, you know, for about five minutes today. I thought, man, he was on to something. Let's go to Reese with the Wendy's Halftime Report. This Halftime Report is presented by Wendy's. You know when it's real. Offense most definitely at a premium here in Charlotte at the ACC Championship. Sammy Watkins. A juggling catch, but there was not much to speak of on that side of the ball, guys, for either team in the first half. It's 10-10 Virginia Tech and Clemson. And with that, we welcome you back here on the field at Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte. Dari Noka alongside Todd McShay and Rod Gilmore. Again, not a lot of offense. Todd, what do you ultimately take away from the first 30 minutes? Dari, the thing that's really stood out to me is that both defensive lines are dominating the action. What that's doing is it's really making it difficult for either team to establish the run, and it's putting a lot of pressure on these quarterbacks to get the ball out and get the ball out quickly. Now, of these two quarterbacks, I've been a little bit more impressed on the Virginia Tech side. I think Logan Thomas is doing a better job to this point. I think you're right. I think the thing that stood out, defensive line play, but really on first down and second down, they dominated the running attack. That allowed them to get their best pass rushers on the field and force the quarterbacks to move their feet, which is why the accuracy is off. All right, guys, you're Clemson, you're Virginia Tech. How do you get going in the second half? Get the ball to number two. He's not 100%, but at 90%, Sammy Watkins is the best player on this field for either football team. The more times they can get the ball to Watkins, I think the better chance they have of winning this game. Agreed. And as for Virginia Tech, it's David Wilson. Yep. You have to stay with him in the running attack. Even though that they've had some problems in the first half, he's a big play waiting to happen. That's going to be the key. Clemson needs to get going to win their first ACC championship game. Virginia Tech closing in on a fourth in five years. Reese? to make a close argument for the title game. Clemson trying to salvage its late season swoon by winning the ACC. Tied at 10 with Virginia Tech at the break. Welcome back to Charlotte, everybody. And let's go down to Jay Crawford to introduce our contestants for the Dr. Pepper ACC Championship tuition throw. To open tonight's halftime festivities, Dr. Pepper and the ACC are proud to present the Dr. Pepper tuition throw. First, let's meet our two contestants. From Melbourne, Florida, Jonathan Wynn, and from Forked River, New Jersey, Josh Dawson. John and Josh attempt to throw footballs into the giant Dr. Pepper cans. Both are competing to win tuition money for their education. Jonathan is a double major in social work and communications. Josh is studying education. Whoever makes the most successful passes into the can in 30 seconds will be the winner and will take home $100,000 in tuition. The runner-up will take home $23,000 in tuition. Jonathan and Josh... Don't be nervous. Crowd, let's hear it. Gentlemen, are you ready? You will begin on the referee's whistle. Good luck. <laughs> 
So far, so good. Josh now beginning to pull away a little bit. Jonathan not backing down. Five seconds left. And Josh is the winner. Congratulations, Josh. Makes 18 throws in 30 seconds. And he is the proud winner of $100,000 in tuition money from Dr. Pepper. And the bedlam ensues. Somewhere in the mayhem is Tony Jacobs. He is uh, vice president of marketing for Dr. Pepper. Tony, come on in. Uh, on behalf of Dr. Pepper and our Dr. Pepper bottlers, congratulations on winning $100,000 wish and throw all right josh congratulations were you nervous i was pretty nervous but i i just focused and pretended like it was my backyard <laughs> how will this change your life it completely will change my life this has opened up so many new doors thank you dr pepper i love you congratulations this has been the dr pepper acc championship tuition throw our score at the half, Virginia Tech 10, Clemson 10. We'll return for the second half right after this. This is Dr. Pepper Championship Week. Welcome back to the Dr. Pepper ACC Championship on ESPN from Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, folks, welcome to Jimmy V Week for Cancer Research on ESPN. We continue that commitment to the V Foundation and Jim Valvano's dream to defeat cancer. We want to take a look at tonight's good hands play brought to you by Allstate. A little bit different here, Herbie, because we've seen some of the best open field tackling we've seen all season. Oh, we sure have. It's been fun to watch the defensive backs. Perfect technique by Kyle Fuller that time in the open field. Then on the other side of the field, just in fact, the next series, Jonathan Meeks makes a great play against David Wilson. And I'll tell you, these two defenses have made it very, very tough on the opposing offenses. When you think of good tackle in the ACC, I always think of Lawrence Taylor. He oh, sort yeah. of changed the Going, position a lot of when Florida, he was playing in Carolina. A lot of great Florida State teams, too. I, the, the thing I want to see in this second half, if you're a Clemson fan, you're happy that they haven't turned the football over. Considering the way the last four games have gone, that's huge. But I think which quarterback avoids mistakes in the second half will be the team that's going to be able to get out of here with a win. Both defenses are attacking right now. The offensive line and the quarterbacks, we only have 10 points on the board for each team. It's going to get interesting here in the second half. And a, right after this kickoff, a little piece of news to update you on something here, Herbie, as the kickoff is going to be fielded on the seven-yard line, and Gregory comes out to the 34th. The electricity has been off in Clemson, South Carolina, since the start of this football game and is apt to remain off for the entire game. There's a fire in a substation down there. So what I would expect to have happen is that somewhere there will be a replay maybe on ESPNU after power is restored tomorrow or somewhere down the week so that those great fans down there can watch this football team. Right now they are tied at 10. They are on defense and Logan Thomas and the Hokies with the first possession. Thomas deflected incomplete and do you know how hard it is to deflect a pass thrown by a six foot six inch quarterback yeah there they were Goodman getting in on it Goodman's about six four himself they bring pressure again Jonathan Meeks they've got five defensive backs in there they brought five and they're pushing back that Virginia Tech offensive line so Clemson, Kevin Steele, the Tigers are hoping that that trend continues where they win the battle at the line of scrimmage Second down and 10 from the 34-yard line for the Hokies. And they are trying to get David Wilson going here in the second half. Wilson, six carries for 21, and now he has seven for 24 yards on the night. So that Tiger defense, they have done a great job on the Hokie running back. You know, he has 34 carries this year of 15 yards or longer. That's most in the country. 
And tonight, seven carries for 25 yards, and it's all about the way they are attacking upfield and penetrating against the Virginia Tech line. Third down and six. And Logan has to throw this away. Anthony, the very talented freshman linebacker, was all over the Hokie quarterback. Again, three plays, three blitzes by Kevin Steele. <laughs> He's he is fired up, and he should be. Now we've got Virginia Tech with a dispute, possibly with an official. We get a late flag. We have indeed, Herbie. You saw it come down at the 28-yard line, thrown back there by the Hokie players. Intentional grounding, number three. That's a loss of down to spot a foul. Fourth down. So he was not outside the tackle box when he flipped it to the sideline. The blitz is going to come right through the middle. Nice job there by Anthony with the acceleration. The slight delay caused some confusion up front for the Virginia Tech offensive line. Cole will punt, and the Tigers figure to have good field position here. But Cole drives one over Hopkins' head. This guy is amazing. This is a youngster who didn't punt much until last week. And let's check in down below now with Heather Cox. Heather? You guys were talking about the turnover story. Clemson was minus 10 in turnovers the last four games. Dabo Sweeney said the fumble recovery that led to the touchdown really set the tone for the first half, and he's proud of his defense. Offense, on the other hand, he said, we still haven't gotten in sync. Taj Boyd is missing targets that he normally hits. He's got to be more efficient in the second half. He also praised his team but said they need to be smarter in the second half. Too many penalties in the first half. So, Herbie, Cole has followed up an earlier 60-yarder with a 61-yard <laughs> punt. You talk about affecting field position, and now only to dances to daylight. A terrific run to the 26 by the junior Clemson tailback. Nice pull here by the guard, McLean. He picks up a nice block there on the closing end, J.R. Collins. And I'll tell you again, Ellington healthy is a different back. Great vision. He's got that jump cut where he's able to get around the defender and get more yardage. Ellington 76 yards on the night. And now a strike to Hopkins for another first down. And the Tigers are mounting to drive out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Look at, again, the soft coverage. Corners. You've got Bonner in there for J. Ron Hosley, and he's giving about a 12-yard cushion there. Nice recognition there to see that and to be able to make a quick throw out there for an easy first down. That's pitch and catch. And so the Wildcat with Ellington and nothing doing. That's a couple times we've seen this and they haven't been able to get that play going. Got a lineman down, but. See Watkins trying to grab some of the Hokies' attention, but that time the corner, Dietrich Bonner, who's been picked on a bit out on the perimeter, was able to come in and make a nice play, and it looks like Phillip Price is down. You know, Price was a question mark coming into this game, and he's the big left tackle. It was all ACC honorable mention this year, and Brandon Thomas has been his backup from time to time. This offensive line has been much maligned in recent weeks. And his injury against Wake Forest has really, I think, affected the continuity of the offensive line. So Price going down will have to reshuffle the deck yet again up front for Clemson. Well, get ready for bowl season with the ESPN Bowbound app featuring video news analysis. The latest BCS standings that will all become official tomorrow. Weekly projections. ESPN's Bowbound app free on iPhone and Android. And again, a reminder that 8.15 tomorrow night on ESPN, they'll reveal the BCS bowls. And then at 9 o'clock, They'll run down the entire lineup. Herbie, what do we have? 35 bowls coming up now in the month of December? I think so, yeah. There's nothing better than bowl week, right? That's great. Love to see the conferences battle one another. Boy, he is very slow to be taken off the field. We talked about it. That, that knee has been bothering him the last three weeks. He's just trying to be a gamer, just trying to play 
They tried him early last week against South Carolina and had to replace him. He held up for a half tonight, and it looks like it's going to be tough for him to come back. So again, the Hokies are going without Hosley. The fine defensive back from Delray Beach, Florida. He was injured in the first half. Bonner and Hill have been playing on the corners, and the hybrid has been Fuller. Fuller now goes out on the slot receiver. Taj Boyd comes back short side, got a first down, put it in the hands of the electric one. This time it is Hopkins. And they continue to go after Dietrich Bonner, who is a freshman. Now he's going to be a big time player, don't get me wrong, but he's playing in the ACC championship game, and Taj Boyd is trying to take advantage of that by going after him. DeAndre Hopkins has great quickness to be able to show him a vertical stretch threat and then come back underneath. Now Watkins in motion. Coming around on that jet sweep. Fumble! The Hokies go for it, but a Clemson player was also right there, and it is Dwayne Allen, the tight end to the rescue. So here's a young man who is up for the Mackey Award, is one of the best in the country, doing those little things. And how about Bonner, who's been picked on this time? He makes a pretty good play, gets physical, and boy, it looked like Ax Exum had a chance to recover that, but the big tight end is able to get it back for Clemson. Right between the wickets. Now they were looking for the pass by Hopkins, and he does throw on the move incomplete. He was <laughs> definitely going to get that ball off. <laughs> Jerem Brown was the intended target that time. And it will be second down and 10 for Dabo Sweeney's team. Yeah, he actually wanted to throw this ball to the tight end. Here's Taj Boyd getting involved, picks up the defensive end, J.R. Collins. You know, that time Hopkins was actually looking to the tight end, Dwayne Allen, but he fell down on going out for his route. Taj Boyd keeps it. Left side, bang straight ahead. And... He is down at the 20-yard line with Bonner making the stop. Boy, it's good to see Taj Boyd run the football with authority. We've not seen this in recent weeks. He is leaving it out there. He holds on to the ball, and it's Bonner again making a play against the run. That is helmet to helmet, folks. We have seen that called. I am surprised the flag didn't fly on that one. Ball at the 20-yard line, third down and three. Watkins slips into that backfield now, loads up. He's the second man, and they're going to option to him, and here comes Watkins, daylight 20, 15, pushed out of bounds. So Mike O'Kane calling plays here, dials this up. Uh, he gets the ball to the outside. Watch how quickly Taj Boyd delivers this. Nobody takes him, but he just wants to get the ball to the speed. Typically, quarterbacks are taught to take it to the defensive end or a defender to make you eventually pitch it. This time, nobody took him, but he just delivered the ball to get the ball out on the perimeter with outstanding speed by Sammy Watkins. And a first and 10 at the 15. Taj Boyd again. Cuts at the 10. And he is at the nine-yard line before Edwards, the linebacker, brings him down. Option again here, not just to pitch it, but this time to throw it or to run it. This is a different Taj Boyd. This is the Taj Boyd that we saw early in the year playing aggressively. Boy, Brent, the last three or four weeks, it's almost like he's been back there thinking too much, worrying about making mistakes. Tonight, he seems to be just turning it loose and playing football. They can get a first down without scoring the touchdown at the five-yard line. This is second and three. And this time, Boyd is back to throw for it wide open. Touchdown to Allen. The big tight end again. And there is a penalty flag. Hang on. Back at the 20-yard line. But the referee is signaling this is going to be a touchdown. He's telling Dabo Sweeney. Personal foul. Rough in the passing, number 17 in the defense. There's a touchdown on the play. 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. You know who they went after again for the touchdown? Dietrich Bonner in coverage. A freshman at six feet trying to match up with Dwayne Allen, one of the top catch, uh, catch uh, tight, receiving tight ends in the entire country. 6-4. Not only that, Bonner fell down, making it very easy for Taj Boyd. 
10 and 0 makes it. So here is Dwayne Allen, the junior from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Clemson 17, Virginia Tech 10. And because of that personal foul, the Tigers will kick it off for the 45. Spencer Benton figures to nail this one into the end zone. And so they don't even give David Wilson a chance on this play. Go back to the touchdown and the matchup. This is a huge drive for Taj Boyd. But look at this. Dwayne Allen matched up against Dietrich Bonner, who had a rough drive there. That time he falls down in coverage. And remember, Boyd went after him a lot comes to the sideline and the freshman gets a little lecture here and a little advice from J. Ron Hosley who at this point has been out of the game since early in the ball game with a stinger. Now junior tailback David Wilson tied the school in ACC records with 10 100 yard rushing games in 2011. He has been held to 25 yards here tonight by this Tiger defense. Play action to him and they couldn't throw it to him but the big quarterback breaks free breaks a tackle. And he is down at the 21 yard line. Branch hauls Logan Thomas down. It looked towards the end of that play like we might have a horse collar, but let's look. Logan Thomas, here's his strength, Brent. Almost a Ben Roethlisberger type of scramble, the way he is able to elude the pressure. And that is, that is a, a horse, horse collar, exactly. What a, How could he miss that? Yeah, right there in front of the official. Branch, who tries to catch up with him, it's a no call. Another break for Clemson, but up front, it's a mismatch for Clemson. On second down, still trying to get Wilson going, and the Tigers are there to meet him. It is now quite clear, Kirby, that Kevin Steele has said, we are going to take David Wilson away from them. Well, you can always take one thing away yeah. from a defense. I think Kevin Steele came in from the first series and said, we're going to take David Wilson away. They have been attacking with their ears pinned back from the opening series. And I said at the beginning of the telecast, I'll say it again, when teams do that, you've got to make them pay for that aggressive attitude, whether it's misdirection or the vertical passing game. Something has to happen to slow down this pass rush. And Wilson bending over, so Oglesby is on the field now for this third and eight. Got one on one, lobs it up in the air, and it is caught by Boykin. A beautiful catch, a penalty flag. The defender was draped all over Jared Boykin of Charlotte. What a grab this was. Pass interference, number 81 of the offense. Oh, and my. For the goal. Replay third down. Oh. Brent, not just the effort to make the catch, and this would be interesting to see where they see the push off. How about the job to get the foot down? But let's see where he pushes off. It's kind of going back and forth here both ways. Breland and Boykin were pushing, especially at the end. I think what they caught Boykin for is at the last second when he adjusted and made his position to go up into the air, he put his right hand right on the chest of Breland to basically to be able to separate himself from the defensive back. Five penalties against Virginia Tech and two against Clemson for 20 yards. So the flags have gone against the Hokies here tonight. No question about that. And it is third and 18. Play clock down at three. Option look. And a quarterback breaks another tackle, but he couldn't even get back to the original line of scrimmage. And the Hokies are forced to punt. Biggest concern that Virginia Tech had coming into this game is how they would match up physically against Goodman, Thompson, Moore, and Branch. And we can see why that's been a concern. Cole is standing inside the Clemson five-yard line. Hopkins standing at the Clemson 40. On the one hop, a dangerous, dangerous bid for a few more yards, but Hopkins made the most of it close to midfield, and so it'll be half a field that the Tigers will be working with when you come back. The 2011 Dr. Pepper ACC Championship Game, brought to you by Dr. Pepper.
With 23 flavors, Dr. Pepper is always one of a kind. At Lexus, it's time to engineer amazing. Welcome back to Bank of America Stadium here in Charlotte. While you were gone, Frank Beamer said that they got away with a horse collar on my quarterback. And now Taj Boyd going downfield. He's got the fellow open. The freshman Watkins takes it in. Speed kills. And Sammy Watkins from Fort Myers, Florida for 53 yards. Uh, they waited and waited and waited and they eventually went back to old reliable a little double move a pump and go they continue to pick on these corners this time chris hill out there by himself isolated against a true freshman perfect patience and taj boyd again looks like the taj boyd of earlier in the year he is feeling it especially here in the second half well it's been 30 years since clemson played in the Discover Orange Bowl, and they are closing in on that bid. This telecast available in 3D on ESPN 3D, brought to you by Sony. Fans, of course, are here at the Bud Light viewing party in Charlotte, experiencing the latest technology firsthand. And that touchdown for a Clemson fan probably looked real nice in 3D. So the first two drives of this half have been three and out. And this is Gregory returning the kickoff for the Hokies. And he is out to about the 27 with a penalty flag flying at the 29-yard line. Another Virginia Tech mistake. There are two fouls on the play. Legal block in the back, number 45, is declined. Illegal block in the back, number 13, is accepted. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. First down. So another flag against the Hokies. Go back to that touchdown. First play of the drive, the double move to Watkins. We've seen a lot of that this year, but mainly early in the year. A little hesitation, and Chris Hill, the corner, bites up on it, and a perfectly thrown ball by Taj Boyd, who is really feeling it tonight. 18 to 25, 219 yards, and Sammy Watkins, five catches for 80 yards. So again, the defensive front. They are just having a field day. Brandon Thompson of uh, Thomasville, Georgia, slanted on the center, and he just ate him up. Well, they are just pushing Virginia Tech back into the defensive line. Tarek Hopkins is a strong man, and that time, Virginia Tech, I mean, how would you like to be David Wilson? David Wilson, I mean, we could talk all we want about how he has not been able to run the ball tonight. But this Clemson defense is the reason up front on that defensive line. Foreman rushes in, and they deflect the ball again. Coming in hard was Brown, a backup defensive end from Charlotte, North Carolina. So in front of his family, he gets it done, deflects another pass. Look at the pressure up front from the front four. And you said it, you got a quarterback at 6'6". But this defensive line's getting in there so quickly, and Logan Thomas, I mean, they're even trying to get the ball out of his hands quicker, and it still doesn't make much of a difference. It's been nothing but three and out this half for the Hokies. Logan Thomas looking for a solution against this fierce four-man rush. Gets this off, middle, great pitch down the middle, and the catch by DJ Cole. No, wave it off. I thought for a moment he'd made the grab, uh, he got the ball actually in there, Brent. It's a heck of a throw, but he was unable to hold on to it. He finds the seam. This is a tough ball. Oh, it actually play. comes out of the receiver's hands because of the way the defender this time is able to just knock it away. Martin Jenkins with nice play. Fourth down and 13, so it's another 
three and out here and Hopkins standing just the other side of midfield. A short punt which means a short field for the Tigers. And the Tigers are turning the screw right now. And tomorrow night the BCS selection show will be on ESPN Sunday at 8.15 Eastern. You'll find out who's going to the BCS Bulls. Michigan State with a lead on the Badgers. Will they be taking on Oregon in the Rose Bowl? 8.15 and then where all the Bull teams are going coming up at 9. Only a 28-yard punt for Danny Cole that time. And the Hokies are really under fire here in the third quarter. Ties Boyd. Takes a deep drop. Got a man open on the side to complete. And Allen coming over on the top, Herbie, they were able to finally pick him up. And that was a linebacker, Edwards, who had to go with him. Edwards had to get back there in coverage, try to stay with the big tight end. You can see this third quarter completely dominated by Clemson. They've been able to make the big plays. Chad Morris, the offensive coordinator, deserves a lot of credit for the adjustments that they have made here in this second half because it's allowed, I think, Taj Boyd to play with much more confidence. Ellington to the middle. And a first down at the 29-yard line of the Hokies. And the Hokies are really back on their heels. Well, yeah, you attack so much from the outside. And then this quick hitter, look at the linebackers and the safeties. They're looking out to the outside because most of the plays that Clemson's having success with are to the perimeter that time. Before they could adjust back to the middle, Ellington was downfield. Ellington trying to get the left edge. In zone ahead. Barges for it. Touchdown. A 29-yard run by Andre Ellington. We came in expecting David Wilson to show us acceleration. How about a healthy Andre Ellington? Amazing block downfield by the receivers, giving him enough space. He got to the corner. They are mixing up the play calling, and again, this is the Clemson offense that we saw early in the year. They keep you so off balance and on your heels. Ellington is now rushed for better than 100 yards. And the Tigers take command here in the third quarter. You know, the play before Ellington ripped it up the middle. Now he's going to follow a couple of the big boys around the corner, and he's able to get downfield. But what you love to see is not just Cloy pulling around and McLean, it's the receivers willing to get down there and get involved and in being able to free the way and make some big blocks. But that speed and that quickness is amazing. This is first 100-yard game since his injury. Now, Philip Price, Heather tells us, out for the day. So they move Mason Cloy, a backup guard, out there to tackle, and he helped throw a great block on that play. So three touchdown drives here in the third quarter. We were deadlocked at 10 at the intermission. You come into this game with Clemson, and you kind of get locked into Taj Boyd and Sammy Watkins. But what made this offense so difficult to defend early in the year was you had Watkins and Boyd and Dwayne Allen and Jerron Brown and DeAndre Hopkins and Andre Ellington in the backfield. There's so many different pieces to the puzzle. And we're starting to see that here in the second half. From the 10-yard line is Gregory. And Gregory out to the 32, and a penalty flag comes in. There's no foul for illegal block in the back. First down, Virginia Tech. So it has been all uphill for the Hokies offense. As we told you, it has been nothing but three and out. Yeah, and, and really, you even go back to the first half, and Clemson was still attacking in the first half, with the exception of the one long throw that they found to DJ Coles. Look at this second half, punt, punt, punt. Not only that, three, three and outs. They can't get anything going, and Clemson, the longer this game goes on, the more they just continue to pin their ears back and come after Logan Thomas. Oglesby checks in as a running back. He's to the 37. We'll check in with Reese Davis for an update.
Brent, Oklahoma State is opening up a can on Oklahoma, and the Sooners are helping. Landry Jones just lost the ball. Second time he's done that tonight. Rashetti Jones scored. Last time they only took it to the one. 34-3. The Sooners have turned it over four times. Aaron so Reese, if that holds up, the Cowboys will head on down to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, and it would mark the first time that Coach Gundy will have beaten Oklahoma as a head coach at Oklahoma State. Second down and five for the Hokies who are looking for a first down here in the third quarter. On the ground, a one hopper to Oglesby, and this won't net the first down. Senzabar is up, and what a defensive effort. Boy, they have just done everything. Kevin Steele, the defense coordinator, not only turning them loose, but they're well prepared. Every formation that they see, they know what's coming. They're taking away the tendencies. They're in perfect position. But more importantly, they are very, very aggressive in the way they're attacking the line of scrimmage, taking any hope at all away from Logan Thomas in this offensive line. So here's your third and four for Logan Thomas and the Hokies. And he's got a first down into Clemson territory, D.J. Coles. One of the few times that we've seen Logan Thomas on third down have a chance to catch his breath and make a read. And even then, this time he got rid of the football. He got it out of his hands. How many times have we seen the coverage so good that he's sitting back there holding the ball and holding the ball? This time, does a good job of finding the receiver and getting the ball out of his hands quicker. So again, it's a four-man rush. Wilson, and terrific coverage in that secondary. That was Senzaba. And last week against South Carolina, he was the best Tiger corner. Well, that time he was late with the football, and you can see on the year and what they've done tonight, just a dominating performance up to this point. And when you hold Virginia Tech to 40 yards rushing, you're going to have a really good night defending them. Second down and 10 for the Hokies. Press coverage again. Thomas tripped up, giving ground at the 46-yard line. This will be third and long coming up. It's a combination of not just the defensive line playing well, but they're basically telling Logan Thomas, we're going to lock you down in man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. And before your receivers can break free, our front four are going to get to Logan Thomas and make you pay for holding on to that football. So they're making Thomas look into that man-to-man -man coverage. Nobody's getting separation. And then by the time he thinks he can find somebody, the pressure's in his face. And here comes the blitz. Now they back out. Branch has flopped over to the right side. Now they're still coming. Got one on one, and there's a penalty fly. That's interference all the way on Senzaba. Senzaba against Boykin. Well, Brent, and another penalty flag comes. And this time, the first is going to be defensive interference, and then Boykin, out of frustration, spiked the ball, which will be a dead ball penalty against Boykin. Some of the frustrations starting the mound here for this Hokey team. He's interfered with. He also made the catch, but then he got up and spiked the ball. There are two fouls on the play. Pass interference, number 32 defense. That penalty is declined. After the play, dead ball, unsportsmanlike, number 81 of the offense. That's a 15-yard penalty from the end of the play. It will be first and 10, Virginia Tech. Now he's interfered with the reason it's declined. Obviously, he makes the catch, but you cannot lose your cool. You're down 31 to 10. Very physical on the route the entire way, pushing and shoving. He makes a heck of a catch again on the boundary, but then once he makes the catch and looking over the officials, slams the ball down. How can they miss the number that badly? That was on number 15 and not number 32. First down and 10. 
The Hokies now will have the ball at the 38 yard line. Thomas. There's the flare to Oglesby, who is out of bounds at the 36 yard line. With Oglesby in the game, you don't have quite the quickness that you get from David Wilson, but the senior has a lot more power. But at this point, down 31 to 10, they need quickness on the field against this Clemson defense. Second down and nine for the Hokies, who have given up 21 unanswered here in the third quarter. Still three minutes left in the third quarter. Here comes the blitz off the corner. Thomas puts it to the outside and to the 31 yard line is Coles again. And this will bring up another third down here for the Hokies. Third down on the night so far. They are five of 11 as is Clemson. That Clemson has a great deal of confidence in the speed of their defense and in the secondary matching up against the Virginia Tech wide receivers which is allowing them to take more gambles and take those risks by playing that man-to-man -man coverage. With the score in the field position, this might be four down territory if they don't pick it up here. Thomas is going to be stopped short, and again, that is not a clean handoff on the read option. Well, he's reading Andre Branch, and when it, nobody on, the, on his own read, you don't know if you're going to keep it or if you're going to give it. He's trying to make a decision. But by Branch playing it the way he did, it forced the quarterback to be indecisive and then eventually just pulled the ball out and tried to pick it up himself, and he came up short. So they are going to go on fourth down. Joey Phillips checks in. Oglesby is the running back. They need two. Dropped. Had a first down, and it was dropped by Drager, the tight end, and it goes over to the Tigers. They had what they wanted. The tight end matched up man-to-man -man against the linebacker. It's a, it's a catch that Drager can make in his sleep and get in steal. Pretty fired up over there on the other sideline for the Clemson defense. The Discover Orange Bowl awaits the winner of this game. And right now, the Tigers are moving ever so close to Miami. Ellington again a hundred yard night and he picks up about 10 more before Thompson brings him down With, again to see his vision and his suddenness great cutback that time and reading the blocks and getting back behind the left tackles block let me correct myself that was Hopkins who made the stop for the Hokies and again banging straight ahead so 30 years, the Clemson Tigers hope to make it back to the Orange Bowl. Amazing, 1991. For such a great fan base, been some tough years. Hopkins into Virginia Tech territory at the 47-yard line. Taj Boyd continues to look into that defense, sees the soft coverage, takes it every single time. So when they won that last title in 91, they did not go to the Orange Bowl. It has been 30 years since they have been to Miami. First down and 10 with the ball on the Hokies 47. And Taj Boyd to the 40-yard line. Tyler with the stop. This has been a very punishing Clemson performance here tonight on both sides of the ball. And they are one quarter away from a bid to the Discover Orange Bowl in a probable game against West Virginia. That'll have to be sorted out according to the BCS rankings tomorrow.
To the winner goes the spoils, ladies and gentlemen, and there's your ACC championship trophy. It'll go to the winner, and if you'd like to see that presentation, you go to ESPN3.com following this telecast. This is a tremendous city to host this football game, and they've extended the contract, the ACC and the city of Charlotte. Remember you said it during that break, this is a perfect place for the ACC. Absolutely. And now dancing is Watkins again with that great speed, and he's into the red zone. Big part of this offense is the jet sweep. You see it a lot at Auburn. You saw it last year at Auburn with Ontario McCaleb. Watkins has the same kind of speed to be able to get to the corner in a hurry. They've been working all night to get to the edge, and they've had a lot more success in the second half, which opens up again a lot of different aspects in this Tigers attack. So now Taj Boyd. Dances away, throws on the move to Hopkins. Hopkins at the five, and he is down right there. You talk about Sammy Watkins, who set this up. He missed the North Carolina State game with an injured shoulder and came back, the coaches said, at about 93%. And when he was a youngster in Fort Myers, he admired C.J. Spiller. He was also very concerned about the mean streets where he grew up. Family did a great job with him, and he is so happy to be in Clemson. And now we've got a first and goal, and they'll try to run it in, and nothing doing. It'll be second down and goal, and Exum. And so speaking of Charlotte, and how easy it is for these two fan bases to get here, a new ACC championship record tonight, 73,675. This game could stay here for a long, long time. The, like the SEC in Atlanta, this could be like that for the ACC. Now Taj, option look, keeps it, barges toward the end zone, and they say he's just short of it. Line judge came down. Just love said he's just short of it. Love the way, Brent, he is attacking when he's running the football. I, mean, I, I cannot tell you how long it's been in watching Clemson play this last month. We just have not seen this kind of aggressiveness from Taj Boyd. I, I think the coaches were right. They wanted to see him get off to a fast start to reestablish his confidence and get the momentum going in their favor. And I think it's affected him tonight. 20 to 28 through the air. But what I like to see is the way he's running the football. Now his, his upper body looks like it might have broken the plane, but it's obviously all about the football. But just a different guy and good for Taj Boyd after everything he has done for this offense. Good to see him have a chance to go out strong in his final game for this year. He was recruited by Frank Beamer at Virginia Tech, but he decided to attend Clemson instead. And you can see the force that he met right there. He is a good friend of Logan Thomas's. Taj is from Hampton, Virginia, and Logan, the quarterback for Virginia Tech, is from Lynchburg. And they've known each other for a long time. So the ruling is going to stand on the field. It's going to be third down and goal. And Herbie, you are exactly right that this game depended to a large degree upon the performance of Taj Boyd for no Clemson. And he has come up big. He sure has. He, he's back in command, making great decisions, and really just asserting himself tonight. Ellington is behind you, and Taj tries to pick it up himself. And there's the touchdown signal. So four second half possessions for Davo Sweeney and four Clemson touchdowns. With the way Clemson has looked in the last month, this was almost like an explosion in this second half. I mean, it was at 10 to 10 at halftime. Still both teams kind of feeling each other out. There's, there's Chad Morris who's fired up for him. But this second half, it's like Clemson's been waiting for this for the last few weeks, and they're just taking it out right now on Virginia Tech. Ted and Zaro on for the extra point. And it is hard to believe, but at the intermission, we were tied at 10. So that is four unanswered touchdowns. Clemson. Closing in on the Discover Orange Bowl. 
Well, the V Foundation awards 100% of direct donations and net proceeds of events to fund cancer research. Log on to JimmyV.org or call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V to donate. 1-800-4-JIMMY-V. The Tigers will kick it away. And Gregory is back deep. Gregory. And there's a penalty flag flying again. The last three kickoff returns have all featured flags. He's out around the 35 yard line. Thorner return holding number 41. That's a 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Heather, uh, you know, we see finally that David Wilson's coming on the field. What do you know down there on the sideline? Well, the last couple of possessions, he has been noticeably absent. He's not getting the same amount of reps he's accustomed to. Josh Oglesby was in during that last series. Now, guys, he was pacing the sideline with purpose and frustration, didn't stop moving throughout the last series. In fact, stood by the coaches asking to go in, and they said no. He did have his ankle taped earlier in this game, but I've been assured from everyone on the staff that an injury or lack thereof is not the reason he hasn't been getting the reps, guys. Well, they throw the other way, Heather. Thank you very much, hitting DJ Coles. David Wilson, who's the most valuable player, has five carries of two yards or less. And this is a guy, again, led the nation coming into tonight. 34 carries this year, 15 yards or more, but there's been nowhere to go. I mean, this is a guy with great quickness. He has strength. But you can see the job that they have done on him. You see a lot of times five, six, seven orange jerseys running to the ball carrier. They have taken him out of the game. Basically have rushed four. And they stop him short of the first down as we check in with Reese Davis. All right, Sports Center right now presented by Discover Card. LSU takes care of business in the SEC championship game, coming from 10 points down to score 42 straight. Tyron Matthew was terrific. 42-10, Bayou Bengals are off to the championship game. And Michigan State and Wisconsin playing a barn burner in the inaugural Big Ten title game. 29-28 in the third. Sports Center coming up after the game. All right, Reese, and here the Hokies are just trying to get something going here in the second half. They pick up a first down to <laughs> Coles, and that's a story they, for this offense get, in the second half. They get a first down, Brent, and it's like a feeding frenzy by Clemson's defense. I mean, poor DJ Coles, he makes a catch. He's just trying to give you a little bit of effort by staying up, and you've got about, again, six different defenders trying to chase him down to get a piece of him. Thomas is back, middle is open, goes back to him again to the 45, so Coles picks up another first down, and he's the go-to guy. See, this is what I've really been waiting for. The only answer when you, they're shutting down your running game with penetration is you got to get the ball out of the quarterback's hands quickly, and you got to find somebody at receiver who can get some separation. That time they sat back in zone coverage. It made it a little bit easier. Logan Thomas has to take off again. Receivers covered. Picks up about a yard to the 45-yard line. Deshaun Williams, another talented freshman for Clemson, makes a stop. Herbie, you go back in the season, and you take a look at what Clemson did. They torched Auburn, Florida State, went up to Blacksburg and beat Virginia Tech. No team in the country was any hotter. Then they went into that slide, lost three or four, got beat up by South Carolina last week. 34-13. When you talk about a team that has bounced back. Oh, yeah. I mean, again, they look like the way they did early in the year when they were beating some of those heavyweights early in the season. David Wilson, little daylight that time, and close to a first down. That may be his best run of the night. <laughs> It's been one of, the, one of those nights. One thing about Logan Thomas that he's going to have to continue to grow in an area he'll have to continue to improve and grow is when he faces a defense like this, he's got to be able to get back, make a quick read, and get the ball out of his hands. He's still tonight a little bit methodical with his reads, and a lot of these plays are slower in developing, and by the time they develop, there's somebody in his face. So we have another penalty call. We've had nine flags against Virginia Tech and two against Clemson. So not only have they played hard and tough, but the Tigers have played smart here tonight. Substitution. There was 12 men on the defense. That's a five-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. 
first down. You know, and I think Dabo Sweeney deserves a lot of credit for that. I mean, th th this has been a heck of a slide. You know, the first eight weeks, they were right up in the discussion about the BCS. Should they be up there? Should Alabama be? Who should be up there? And then they lost, and it seemed to not only affect them that week, but it deflated them, and they lost three of four. A lot of people wondered, with a championship on the line, would they be able to crank it up one more time for the ACC crown? And obviously, he's done a good job of preparing them. On first down, fires middle, intercepted. Picked off at the 10-yard line. And that is Meeks, who has done a fabulous job in that secondary. And now, he's still running. Out 49-yard line of the Hokies before the quarterback, Logan Thomas. And you talk about an enthusiastic <laughs> sideline over there with Kevin Steele and the rest of that defensive unit. That's a 41-yard return. Just look for the white visor. Foul on the play. And you'll see. Interception, first down, Clemson. How pumped. How, here come the oranges. How pumped is Kevin Steele, the defensive coordinator? He's jumping around. He's inside that pile. Brent, you said it. Jonathan Meeks is a backup safety, plays in a nickel situation. He has had a big night. This time, using his eyes, he jumps the route, cuts, cuts behind Danny Cole, but we've seen him in coverage. We've seen him blitzing and getting into the face of Logan Thomas. This time, he shows an ability to play center field. Great coverage and great recognition stepping in front of that for the interception. Now they pound close to the 50. So a loss of yardage, and it'll be second down on the other side of the 50-yard line. Ellington is the running back. You talk about the performance of Meeks. Reminds us that a fellow by the name of Tyron Matthew was spectacular again <laughs> for LSU. And when you talk about the Heisman, Herbie, I know you had him way up there. Then yeah. he was suspended for using synthetic marijuana. And he sort of dropped off the map, and the voters walked away from him. And this will be incomplete. But after watching him the last couple of games for LSU, is he back on your list? Brent, we can I, vote for three. You and I had him against Oregon first yes. night. We had him in Morgantown against West Virginia. And if you remember that night, I left the broadcast, and I said, right now the Heisman frontrunner should be Tyron Matthew. Right. That was back around week three or four. And you're right. He got in some trouble off the field. But I would argue this. In a year where nobody has had a Heisman moment, the one man who has had several Heisman moments is Tyron Matthew. Now here's Taj Boyd, and he is down at the 49 yard. And this bring up a 49. What's very interesting, if he hadn't gotten in trouble, Whew. Charles Woodson had a moment like that against Ohio State. Sure a couple did. of them, as you sure can recall. Did. Oh, yeah. The last non-offensive player to win it. I'm not so sure that Matthew wouldn't have won it this year. Now I think he's a long shot. He is a long shot, but you're right. Think about the last two games, the Arkansas game and the way he changed that football Absolutely. game uh, with the big punt return. And he creates a fumble. Today, if you watch the game against Georgia, LSU didn't even have a first down. And they had seven points on the board, but thanks to Tyron Matthew, he's a playmaker, he's dynamic, and he's doing it in games that are impacting a team that's undefeated and chasing a national championship. Well, punter Dawson Zimmerman should be very well rested because this figures to be Clemson's first punt of this half. That's how well they have played offensively here. With a 28-point lead, four unanswered touchdowns, and seven minutes and 54 seconds away from a bid to the Discover Orange Bowl. Now, I think the Orange Bowl will have a huge crowd this year if it comes up West Virginia and Clemson. I'm with you. That's a good matchup now. Orange Bowl has to be very happy with the results today of Cincinnati winning, which will send West Virginia in, and Clemson with their fan base. <laughs> They're going to be... Very excited with the way their season ended here in Charlotte. So Zimmerman drives this punt. Couldn't quite back it up. It goes in the end zone. It'll come out on the 20-yard line. 7.46 to go for an ACC championship. Huge night for the Tigers. 2011 Dr. Pepper ACC Championship Game. Brought to you by Dr. Pepper. With 23 flavors, Dr. Pepper is always one of a kind. And IBM, let's build a smarter planet. 
Visit IBM.com slash Smarter Planet. With Kirk Herbstreit and Heather Cox, I'm Brent Musburger. The Dr. Pepper ACC Championship, Charlotte, North Carolina, 38-10. Clemson dominating. First down and 10. And to the 30-yard line is Marcus Davis, who's been relatively quiet here tonight. But that'll move the chains for the Hokies. He has been quiet. And, you know, in a night where they've needed Marcus Davis to be able to get separation, here he comes again. Over to the corner, or came right back with him. Well, he's, Brent, he's 6'4", about 225 pounds, runs a 4'5", and has a 42-inch vertical. <laughs> to me, throw it up and give the guy a chance. There's three catches, Herbie, for 40 yards, and two of them right here in yeah. succession. Second down, and big Logan Thomas firing again, and this time to Drager, the tight end. So a few of the hokey faithful have headed for the exit. But those folks wearing orange, uh-uh. <laughs> they want to see that trophy in their possession. And they want to call their travel agent and head to Miami. Thomas, up too high, incomplete. And that was Boykin, a young man who grew up right here in Charlotte. One of the record-setting performers of the Hokies. And when you look at this Virginia Tech team, the only squad they couldn't handle this year in the ACC, you're looking at them right here. Clemson stormed into Blacksburg, beat them on October 1st, and they're looking for the sweep tonight in a neutral setting. not get the first down. Brent, I want to congratulate you on behalf of the whole crew for being a big recipient of the prestigious outstanding contribution to amateur football awards. that's going to be given to the National Football Foundation dinner on Tuesday night at the Waldorf. Congratulations to that. Thank you. We'll be there to Thank represent you. you and honor you. Well, it's, well deserved. It's because of partners like you <laughs> yeah. over the years that this has been well, that is such an enjoyable run I want to tell you it's a pleasure coming to work with you and working with people like our producer Bill Bonnell Derek Mobley our director down there Zippy on the keyboard for us yeah. and well. TD and, and everybody else who travels with us the cameraman I mean look at the pictures we've had tonight it's been an all-star performance by this group well, it's been a, it's been a great year and that's a, a great honor for you and I know you're looking forward to it we're looking forward to coming in and Will you have a cocktail with me, sir? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Fourth down and seven now, and Logan Thomas throws for the side and the first down to Marcus Davis. And, Herbert, you said it. Throw the ball to Davis. Yeah, I'm surprised. they when, when Clemson started to just, again, come after Logan Thomas and play so much man-to-man -man coverage, Danny Cole and Jared Boykin are good receivers, obviously, but they don't have the quickness and the athletic ability to get the separation from this Clemson secondary, and I think Marcus Davis does, and now that the game's out of reach, they're giving him a shot. And he has to throw this one at the feet of Wilson as Jarrett was coming after him. You know, Herbie, I, I love to talk about the NFL. We know, all know how many great players come out of the SEC and play Sunday football. And overlooked sometimes is the ACC. In the last three years now, the ACC has had 53 linebackers on NFL rosters. That's more folks than any conference in the country. Over the last two years, they've had more pro bowlers than any conference with 47. So sometimes because of the great performance and great players in the SEC, we overlook the talent base down here in the ACC. These yeah. fellas can play a little bit. And honestly, I think we overlook the ACC because their struggles as, as teams, they, they, they've not had a lot of success. When they formed this conference, they the Coastal and the Atlantic, I think they really thought Florida State and Miami and Virginia Tech would be the kind of the anchor schools. The Hokies clearly have held up their end of the bargain. No question. Miami and Florida State have not. So people don't think about the ACC, even though they have exceptional individual talent that obviously moves on to that next level. I agree with everything you said. They have not had that super team here lately. And complete again to Boykin. And the Hokies are marching down the field with 548. And of course, they trail it 
by 28 points. Now you think about Logan Thomas, this quarterback, Herbie, only a sophomore, and remember, he really is still learning how to play quarterback. So there's no a question. tremendous future for this young man, despite the fact this looks like a very disappointing evening for him, and that's incomplete. It'd be interesting to hear. Heather had a, a good report about David Wilson, who's their go-to guy. But in the second half, when this offense was struggling, David Wilson wasn't on the field. Josh Oglesby was out there. You wonder, after the game, when Frank Beamer has a chance to address the media, if he was dinged or if there was another reason that he wasn't out there. Well, he's a junior. And tonight... 11 carries for 32 yards, the ACC Player of the Year. And this is him with the football right now. And he barges inside the 10-yard line. Irby said at the top of the broadcast, if you weren't with us, that one of the things that you don't know about Wilson is how strong he is. He is. He's very committed, like most of the Virginia Tech Hokies, to the weight room. And he has broken some records, some running back records. Think about some of the great backs that they've had and how strong and powerful those backs have been. And you look at him at a 205-pound running back, and yet he's in the weight room working overtime. Picked off at the goal line. This could be a pick six, folks. There's nobody there. Breland. Yes stopped and that was Wilson who got back on him Absolutely. he had the whole sideline open and Wilson hustled back and that's Wilson's best play of the night <laughs> unfortunately but it does show the heart that he has Logan Thomas got back there but David Wilson it's the only time we've had a chance to see him actually turn on the Jets but this Clemson defense has done everything that they've needed to do they step in front of it this time and make the play Breland has the speed but boy, this, this defense has made a lot of plays tonight. That's the second interception for Logan Thomas on the night. Earlier this week, all 12 mascots for the ACC paid a visit to Presbyterian Hemby Children's Hospital, accompanied by Mike London, head coach of the University of Virginia, and the ACC Coach of the Year. And oh my goodness, how much the children enjoyed having their picture taken over there with these mascots. It brought so much joy to those youngsters, and that was just a great, great day. And uh, thanks to all the mascots who participated. Now, a little bit of bookkeeping here as Clemson barges in. Herbie, let's go back to the interception because 64 yeah. yards, that's the longest interception return in ACC championship history. And you'll love this, Brent. We said all night David Wilson's fast. Well, here is here's he showing his speed in the open, open field, but more importantly, how about the heart? not to give up on that play and if he doesn't do that then that is a touchdown and a lot longer interception return for Clemson well there's the turnover margin that has plagued the Tigers in the last four games and tonight a plus three and by the way we welcome the audience from Clemson South Carolina we're so sorry about the power failure you missed a great performance and there's a direct snap to the running back a little trickeration that time DJ Howard as Taj Boyd was walking over was great. to the sideline. There's Chad Morris reaching into his, uh, and reaching into his and high school down. playbook. Oh, Coach, what? What? He used this in Texas. <laughs> that was great. This was a Texas Lake high Travis. school play, yeah. and it moved the change. <laughs> that was like a demo of They that. won a state championship with his play. Back to back. Good for Taj Boyd. Now, Cale Stout comes in as the quarterback. Cliff Stout's son, the backup for cleanup as we go to Reese Davis for an update. All right, Brent, want to let you know what's going on in the Big Ten Championship game. 29-28, Michigan State with a lead on Wisconsin. B.J. Cunningham has had a huge night. Over 100 yards receiving that, his third touchdown of the night. No Spartans ever had more touchdown receptions. But Russell Wilson finds Monty Ball on the shuffle. Two-point conversion, no good. Two-point lead for Sparty in the fourth. So twice this year, Reese, those two teams have had great games, and Dabo Sweeney is headed for a bath as the Tigers <laughs> close in on a trip to the Orange Bowl, oh. and there it is, and it's Orange Gatorade. Dabo will wear that with pride. 255 
And these youngsters from Clemson deserve a lot of credit. They had to listen to the coaches for two and a half hours. Folks, that's a long meeting if you're a football player. Absolutely. You ever, you ever attend a two and a half hour meeting? No. Never lost three or four, though. I guess that's an accountability <laughs> meeting. Third and 12, and the backup quarterback in there hands off to Roderick McDowell. So the mop-up crew is out there, and there's Blake to Christopher with that great beard of his tackled for the Hokies, and uh, it has been a tough night. They got to get Kevin Steele, don't they? Absolutely. I mean, he deserves to get. He deserves to get drilled. And he says, "You know what? You rest." Oh yeah. He looked up on that big monitor, <laughs> and said, I know you're creeping up on me. But they did a great job with the defense here tonight, and all the coaches. They deserve a whole lot of credit for this performance. And it appears as though they're going to be playing West Virginia. Now, you might remember the name Stout. This is Cole Stout. And his daddy, Cliff, played in the National Football League. And Herbie, uh, the family lives in Dublin, Ohio. Went to Dublin Kaufman High School. And his, uh, another coach got it. His brother plays at Ole Miss as a backup quarterback. Oh, he's a backup at yeah. Ole Miss. Yeah. All smiles on one side. And here's tonight's conference update brought to you by Dr. Pepper Ted. There are the bowl tie-ins for the ACC teams. Now nine teams are currently bowl eligible for this conference. But remember Miami has decided not to attend the bowl game. And of course the champion here tonight Clemson would head down to the Discover Orange Bowl where they're expected to be matched against West Virginia. And down on that far side is Boykin working for Logan Thomas and a very disappointing night for Virginia Tech but they figured ahead to perhaps the Chick-fil-A Bowl down in Atlanta. I know that there was speculated that should they come up a loser in this game that that's where they might head and I believe somebody told me that they would play an SEC team down there and I may have read in one of the newspapers here in North Carolina this week that uh, there was speculation about South Carolina but we shall see that will all become official tomorrow night. Second down and 10 and Oglesby will finish up as the running back here for Frank Beamer. SEC championship was interesting with Georgia storming out this afternoon and you know I think LSU hearing all the talk about they could lose and still advance to the national title definitely had an impact on their emotions as much as they tried to downplay it they're human beings but I thought uh, what we really wanted to see is four quarters of football and LSU obviously took control of that game in the second half. Logan Thomas firing incomplete and of course if it comes up LSU and Alabama make it six straight BCS championships for the SEC. Two of them by Florida coached by Urban Meyer who will head to Ohio State for next season. Les Miles won one of course at LSU. SEC 7 and 0 in BCS title game. So what happens when you have two teams in there? Do you go to 8-1? You're 8-1. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Let's make it 8-1. Right? Right? Of course. That's it. <laughs> what a great life. Incomplete. I love that. You get two teams in and all of a sudden you got an L. <laughs> it's not right. <laughs> And of course we want to remind you that Monday night check in and see why the Chargers have backed up this year. They play the Jaguars. And that'll be uh, Monday night football at 830 Eastern time. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern. And of course you got to tune in and watch. Come on man. Oh I love that. <laughs> that is great. That is Come great. on man. <laughs> So the victory formation every coach's favorite formation and there's a penalty flag for some Only oranges have five yards first out come down on the field and you remember those days when Nebraska and Oklahoma used to close it out of the big eight those oranges come flying and Norman or Lincoln I love that I used to love watching that it'd be freezing out somebody would end up looking at this this is dear Steve Spurrier. <laughs> Dabo and Steve had a little exchange of words over this week, but uh, Dabo telling us he still respects Coach Spurrier. And Coach Spurrier is saying that he didn't say it. 
I guess it was the radio now. It was. It? Todd Ellis, we are I not guess, LSU. So. We are we're not Alabama, Alabama. But, but we are definitely not, not Clemson. <laughs> right. <laughs> that sounds like a radio break. It sure does. <laughs> what a win for this Clemson team. Just amazing effort. So here comes the handshake now. Dabo Sweeney closes on a very high note. And after the Tigers have lost three or four, there's the Dean. Frank Beamer, who tells him good job and wishes him well down the road. And there's Watkins, the rookie of the year. And for Logan Thomas, there will be other games. And some of the fellows are now picking up the Orange Bulls, going into the stands with their fans. Let's go down to Heather Cox with Coach Sweeney. Thanks so much, Brent. Coach, congratulations. Your first ACC championship in 20 years. What kind of statement did your team make tonight? Well, I'm awful proud of them. It's great to be a Tiger. You know, it's, we've been wandering in the desert for 30 years at Clemson trying to get back to the Orange Bowl, the site of our greatest moment, and uh, that's where we're going. But I'm awful proud. I've told the team all year that if you just put it together one time, offense, defense, special teams, it won't be close, and tonight it wasn't. When you got your Gatorade bath, we think we saw some tears in your eyes. Can you describe the emotions when that happened? Well, I got this job three years and two days ago, you know, and I put every bit of everything I have into it, you know, to, to try to do this for Clemson and these players who work hard and these coaches and, you know, when you accomplish a goal, it's, it's a great thing, but you know, we're not done yet. We still got a long way to go to, to build this program into, you know, what we want it to be. But, you know, this is what it's all about. You don't quit. There's so many quitters out there. All these people that quit on us, man, they, they don't deserve this. This is for the players and the coaches and for all those people who are all in all the freaking time. And I'm proud of those people. That's what this one's for, all right? Because this, this, this team right here is young and they've had some adversity. But you know, they just keep believing. They listen to the right things. They love each other. We had a lot of accountability tonight. And I kept telling them, just as quick as it turned one way, it turned back. Tonight it did. We got the turnovers. We took care of the ball. We won the game. That's been our formula all year. And it's a great football team in Virginia Tech. I think this ties the record for the highest ranked team we've ever beaten. So credit goes to the players. They got it done. You know, we just kind of steer the ship. These players deserve all the credit, and, and, and almighty God, uh, my Lord and Savior. And coach, the reward is you get to go to the first BCS Bowl game in Clemson history. What does it mean to you to be the one taking your team there? Well, yeah, I'm just an old guy from Pelham, Alabama. I, you know, I'm just, I'm just blessed to be here. That's the bottom line. I'm, I'm just the guy that, you know, was put in this position, and I, I'm just thankful that I have coaches and players and an administration that supports me and believes. And, uh, you know, every every meeting I've had since the day I got this job, I, I take a sign in there, I carry it with me, and it says, believe, you can do it. And tonight, they believed, and they believed for three years. And we're going back to the Orange Bowl for the first time in 30 years. This is our 30-year anniversary of our 81 national championship team. That team set the standard at Clemson. And tonight, we, we're not quite where they were, but we're going to go back and get a little taste of it, and I'm just, I just couldn't be more proud of a group of guys. Coach, Thanks. enjoy. Keep believing, Thanks. Coach. And guys, Taj Boyd here as well, unanimous MVP. Taj, congratulations on an outstanding performance. A lot of talk was made about your confidence dropping over the last month. How did you get it back? Um, that's something that we, we focus on as a team. Um, you know, we had a lot of naysayers here and there, but, I mean, you got to believe in the man upstairs. And we got an opportunity to come out here and play today. And we just gave it all for each other. We're a family, and we did everything we could for one another. And, uh, I mean, that was the difference today. Coach just referenced it, the accountability that he brought up in a two-and-a-half-hour long meeting on Monday. What was said in that meeting to turn things around so quickly for this team? You know, Coach went off. I mean, <laughs> he just showed us the things that, that we did. And, and everything that we did was correctable, honestly. Um, it was just to the point where, you know, we just we weren't accountable. We, didn't, we weren't responsible. And I mean, you know, he made everybody stand up and give a pledge and say that they're accountable. And everybody did that today, and, and that was the difference. You came out of the locker room with four unanswered touchdowns to start the second half. What did you guys change in the locker room to get your offense clicking? Just had to get rolling. Uh, coming into halftime with 10-10, we had that one drive to end in the field goal, and after that, 
we knew we was like, man, we can go from here. So um, guys believed, and we came out here and executed. So. Congratulations. Enjoy it, guys. Tosh can't stop smiling. Good reason to. Thank you. Heather, thank you so much. Great job down there. And, uh, Probably what a magical moment this is for Clemson, the players. That's coach. great. It really is. It's, it's fun to sit here and have a chance to look down on the celebration. Clemson's been through so much this year. Davo Sweeney, outstanding young head coach. And he's right. There's some people that really question this team, their heart, their character. He questioned it on Monday in that meeting, and they really answered the bell. This is a, an impressive performance to not just win the ACC championship and head to the Orange Bowl, but emphatically 38 to 10. You don't see Frank Beamer's teams beaten very often like this. So it was 38-10, and I want to remind everybody, be sure to catch the All-State BCS Selection Show at 8.15 Eastern. Kirk will be there, and you'll find out. It'll be confirmed who will they be playing, probably West Virginia. So this has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports, along with Kirk Herbstreet, Heather Cox, and our entire crew. I'm Brent Musburger. Congratulations to our ACC champions, Clemson. And thanks for watching. Here's SportsCenter.